Good evening, and welcome to Reserve Inspiration Live, where my friends and I play Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition for your entertainment. I am Aaron, and I will be your GM or Galaxy Master for the duration of this adventure. <clears throat> Kayla and Andy hide in the shadows to bring you uh, sound effects, music, and in general keep the show running. And now, the players. We have Lauren playing Tita, the Thrykrian Way of the Iron Lung Monk. Iron Lung. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a homebrew thing oh, we're working okay, on. Okay. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike as Zaxazior, the Videlkin Divination Wizard. Christina playing Plonk, the Verdun Rogue Assassin. And of course, Priya as Minerva, the Scourge Asimar Gloomstalker Ranger. So we have a couple of announcements this week. Um, first, I want to start off by saying fan art. We love it. So if you have any and you want to send it to us, please send it to reserveinspiration at gmail.com. It should be at the bottom on the right, hopefully. Um, please send it there. If you send it to us via that email, that gives us permission to go ahead and use it in a fan art video in the future to show off your artwork. Um, on top of that, I did a thing. Okay, so... A lot of people have been coming to me and like, Aaron, you know, I really, really want to watch your stream live. However, there's so much content before that I've already missed. I don't want to spend 12 hours catching up. What could I possibly do? Well, let me tell you what you could do. <laughs> I took it upon myself to make a new playlist on YouTube with just the recaps. So you can watch five minutes of recaps from the beginning instead of 12 hours of content to catch up. Beautiful. And now you can watch live. Right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, we are live Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our videos hit YouTube on Fridays at 10 a.m. generally. Um, and very soon, starting September 13th, every Sunday night from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, Lauren and I will be hosting Reserve Inspiration's Game Corner. It's very exciting. Uh, we'll be playing uh, or testing out a bunch of different games. We're going to be going over the instructions so that you know how to play. We're going to go over some strategies. Might give you an edge up on some of your friends. Um, and also, you're just going to see us at each other's throats playing <laughs> fun games, probably starting with uh, Settlers of Catan or Catan or Catan or <laughs> Catan or whatever you want to call it. It's one of our favorite Jamie games, Cats. and we can't wait to play it for you all. Um, another thing I wanted to mention. We're getting close to that 50 follower mark on Twitch. Not quite there yet. Hopefully we can be by the break today. And if we are, I'd love to give you one of our t-shirts. Christina, would you like to model the beautiful Reserve yeah. Inspiration t-shirt? I have it right here. I'm mm. just it up over my own logo. <laughs> yeah. it, looks like. it just looks like you're wearing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic, beautiful. So any friends, family uh, that might be around, even if they're not watching live, have them make a Twitch um, account and follow us. Um, that would, it would be fantastic for us to get all the followers and for you to get some fantastic t-shirts as well. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to Priya to tell us a little bit about social media and our space fact for the evening. All right so on social media you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. Um, and of course you can find us on YouTube as well which Aaron just talked about. Um, that is all we have for social media right now at this moment and today's space fact is a continuation of last week's space fact last week i talked about how in approximately four billion years our galaxy the milky way is going to collide with the nearest galaxy the andromeda galaxy and aaron asked if that is going to be a cataclysmic event last week i hadn't done enough research in order to be able to talk about that but this week i did a little bit more research and the answer is kind of <laughs> well, I mean, so it's Great. Not, no, it's, it's, it's not as apocalyptic as it sounds, sort of, because, uh, okay, so like according to NASA, apparently um, there won't exactly be a whole ton of like collisions between stars like you might think there could be because there's so much empty space between stars anyway. So it is very likely oh, that the yeah. stars would be like thrown into different orbits and such, but collisions would still be pretty rare um but also uh, <laughs> but well i, I time, plan on being around in 40 billion years so i, mean, I can't see, wait to thing witness is, this personally. the thing is you might not be because before four billion years happens the sun is going to expand um such that it will kill most of it space facts for the future space facts for the future but this is still what i researched 
for today. Oh, well, right, finish it off. Finish but, it off. Then. But, but <laughs> also, if you do want to see what this would look like if there was Earth, st- uh, if there was life still on the Earth at this point, NASA actually has a bunch of computer-generated photos that you can look up on their website about what the night sky might look like as the Andromeda galaxy gets closer and collides with us. So. Check it out. It's really cool. Get it's terrifying. terrifying. All right. No, it's so pretty, though. That awesome. <laughs> so now, as I'm sure all of you loyal viewers know, every time that we have one of these live shows, I talk a little bit about the Game Reserve uh, because our studio is, is built with it inside, and they're very hospitable. Um, so today, I thought we'd have a little bit of fun. Um, the way we're going to do this is each of us has a line that we're going to read about the Game Reserve. However, the exciting part is that I have randomized um, characters that they are going to have to do interpretations of. Um, and then Kayla and Andy in the background will attempt to guess what we are impersonating or who we are impersonating. That's kind of unfair because it's on us, not them, if they don't get it. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, you know, hey, hey it is what That's the fun of it. <laughs> so, See, it's on Aaron if none of us get it. Actually, that's true. Right. It's all your fault. So <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to take turns going around reading our lines in the impersonation that you've chosen. Kayla and Andy will then secretly write down who they, th- they think the impression is about. <laughs> Whichever of the two of them has the most correct at the end <clears throat> will get, I guess, a, a GM inspiration of sorts oh, where they you? can play God throughout the game and any role that any one of us makes, one time, they can say, hey, this is God, re-roll that. <laughs> Uh, and we have to re-roll it. So it could uh, it could hurt me. It could hurt the players. We shall see. I have uh, a question. Yes. What if they tie? If they tie... Two gods? No. Oh. If they tie, Man. they don't get to change the future. <laughs> so I'm going to hold these over the, gla- the screens here for you all to take one. Hold these. Okay. Oh, I hate oh, this. Oh, joy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. You're gonna have so oh, much this fun. is so lost. Because my mask is on. <laughs> of course. Of course. Oh, no. <laughs> Alright, so let's see who we're getting over here. <laughs> Can I stand up and do mine? <laughs> uh, if, uh, yeah. Maybe Neil so that the camera can still see you? Neil? Oh, alright, alright. I got one. I got one. Oh, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> alright, so. <clears throat> I'll, I'll go first, make it a little, uh, you know, reduce your nerves. Um, do you have games? Do you have playing games? <laughs> well, head on down to the game reserve for all of your game needs. Okay, that is mine. Yeah. So, Andy, Kayla, write okay. down who you think that impression is of. That was very good. Mine was so very good. And now Lauren is going to go. This is unfair because you can't see my face because it's half of who this person is. <laughs> Hence why I wanted to get up, but I feel like if I get up, you're hey, not hey, going to see me. We've got screens. Take it off for a second. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> oh, the game reserve is not only a store, but a community of family and friends for all ages who love games. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I can definitely, well, I know what they are. Right, I can definitely tell what that is. All right, uh, Mike. This is going to be difficult. <laughs> do it up. Do it up. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Get it, Mike. I'm pumped. No one's going to understand it. <laughs> that whole room is scheduled game in the place. For a game like Master the Gallery. More than a board of game. A role playing game like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> some fun and exciting board games in a safe and family friendly environment. Okay, okay. I think I know who that is. I, I think I know who that is. It wasn't a good one. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. If they don't get it, I understand. <laughs> Alright, Priya? Alright, so can I like, not like a prop, but can I use my hair oh, as like, okay. Do what you need to right, do. Okay, so, pretend that my hair is like 
like a cake or something. <laughs> Good evening. Visit their Facebook page, The Game Zoo. Give them a call at 978-298-4409 or stop by and visit the owner, James, at the address in the lower right hand corner of your screen. There you go. All right. <laughs> 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 oh, fantastic. So, Andy and Kayla, for the first one that I did, you have your mic on so you can talk? Oh, yeah, we're good. All right. Uh, who <laughs> did you both say? Uh, I said Gollum. Yeah. Oh, you both said Gollum from Lord yes. of the Rings? That would be correct. Oh, oh, we don't have like a little. Uh, well, they have something they can check off. Uh, no, I meant like little sound effects. Like, you got it right. <laughs> oh, I'll make those from now on. All right, Lauren. Uh, w- uh, what did you get for Lauren's? I didn't. I guessed Elvis. Yes! Ooh, no! Kayla is in the lead. Oh, uh, a hunk of hunk of burning love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the two of you, what did, uh, what was Mike's impression of? That was Scoob. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Scoop. All right. Scoop. So, Kayla's, in the Kayla's lead. still in the lead. Scoop, uh, what did you all have for Christina? I wrote I have no, no idea. <laughs> I didn't think so. It's a uh, Stewie Griffin from Family. Oh, 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 all right. Yeah. All right. It was, it was you needed a little one. more British so, accent. So this last I, one. As I kept reading, it was just kind of falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually what happens to me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this last one, if. Andy is correct and Kayla is wrong, then it's a tie and neither of them get this inspiration. However, <laughs> if Kayla gets it right, it doesn't matter if Andy does or not, she is the winner and can affect this game. So, Priya, what did you say for Priya's? I have no idea. I guess Dracula. I yes. also guessed Dracula. It was Dracula! It was yeah! Dracula! Yes! Woo! Woo! All right, so Kayla, at any point during our game t- this evening, if there's a roll that you dislike, you can come over the mic and tell us to re-roll it. Yeehaw. And we'll take that, whatever the new result is. <coughs> um, all right. <clears throat> Does anyone else have any other announcements they'd like to uh, go into before I give our recap of last week's episode? No? I think we're good. Good? Mm-hmm. All right. Fantastic. So, <clears throat> last time on Reserve Inspiration. After Minerva hung up her call with Zanessi and the rest of the Spike team, she noticed a large ship rapidly approaching the party's gun 792 ship. After calling the team into the cockpit to discuss what they should do, a transmission came through. The screen was fuzzy and gray, but they could hear the voice quite clearly. This entity claimed to be a merchant and invited them on his ship shop. Upon meeting this observer beholder named Kravikov, the party began to explore the warehouse in search of some necessary survival items such as food and materials for their ship's repair. Tita, however, remained behind and continued to play the arcade game, which he mastered and finally beat level five. <laughs> yeah, <I> did. <laughs> Plonk attempted to talk down one of Kravikov's mouths or personalities to a lower price for some of the items she wished to purchase. Kravikov agreed to do so if she were to give him pertinent information. The better the information, the better the discount. Plonk wavered on how much information to give up about their experiences thus far and eventually gave up very little. Kubrick purchased a leather duster and a Stetson, while Minerva... (laughs) (laughs) The most important part. The most important part. She really was. Uh, While Minerva rounded up the materials and tools necessary to repair the ship, Zaxa found the food stores and also picked up a drug called an adrenaline shot. After returning to the ship, tensions and moods were high, while the past and present were brought up into the minds of the party members. Minerva chose to stay up all night as to not allow Azaziel, a solar angel, uh, and Minerva's boss, to communicate uh, with her via dream for the second time. Plonk got hopped up on caffeine from the newly discovered drink of coffee, uh, and was taken was taken into one of their fighter pods where Tita uh, was getting baked and pretending to fly it. (laughs) Uh, The two of them continue to play around while Zaxa decides to play a little prank and eject the pod from the mothership using the spell Maychan. Plonk and Tita stay disconnected for some time, but keep up with the ship. That is when the party caught their first glimpse of the planet of Isgard in its infinite glory. And that is where we are picking back up. This evening. <clears throat> so, 
Tita Plunk, you are in one of the fighter pods, uh, floating about in astral space, uh, while the mothership uh, Kubrick is uh, commanding and having uh, Minerva and Zaxa kind of. I think you're in the rec room right now, correct? Yeah. I think so. Yes. All right. So you come up to this beautiful view of Iskard. Um, and looking through the glass windshields of both the mothership and the fighter pod, what you see is this. A massive mountain surrounded by and held aloft over turquoise water at its base. Plumes of thick black smoke rise from the apex of the volcanic landmass. The water falls in small stream-like waterfalls over the edge of the outer rock wall exterior. The leaking waters all flow into a massive river, the River Oceanus, which cuts through the dark expanse of space in two separate directions. The mountain itself is surrounded by dozens of much smaller floating land masses, some kind of pointed toward, uh, pointed up and some kind of pointed down with flat surfaces on top. Um, every structure built on either the prime mountain or its floating islands is built of a bright, shiny, silvery metal, um, which also has magic uh, harnessing crystals uh, that are smelted into the metal to allow the star's radiant light to reflect and refract like a prism. Uh, beams of rainbow light dance on every surface around you. It's difficult not to stare and gawk at such awesome beauty. Villas and businesses, open areas and farmlands, are all carved and embedded uh, within the sides of this mountain, all around, on, on all sides. Uh, this is the largest mountain any of you have ever seen. Uh, obviously, Kubrick and Minerva have seen this because they're from Isgard. Uh, but besides that, none of you have ever seen a mountain this, this massive. Have I even ever seen a mountain? Probably not. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with that being said, I turn it over to all of you. What would you like to do? Do we want to go back, or are we? Um, I'm kind of. Are we whipping and dipping? <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of. I'm kind of freaking out. <clears throat> are we still? Oh, like... had, didn't you have the edible? Are we still? Out <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. You chilled out because I made yeah. you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess we'll go back because. You want to? We don't want to arrive like alone. Well, I don't want to arrive alone. So. Yeah. So I would like one of you to make a perception check. And the other one to make a dexterity check. Who is controlling the vehicle and who is trying to uh, look me, to see how it is? Yeah, uh, she's con he's so you're, controlling. You're good. I'm you're good. So you're good. Go for it. Keep it coming. You get advantage on your left. dexterity check because you've mastered the uh, arcade game, okay. the simulation. So I'm perception. Yeah. That one. <laughs> Great. Um, fourteen. That's sixteen. How is gonna go? Sixteen. So, Tita, you're very carefully guiding this thing in slowly to, to, to match back to the clips, yep. which are magnetic in, in okay. a sense. Um, and Plonk is kind of trying to look out the side windshield, and she's like, um, you're good, you're good, <laughs> as you hear. <laughs> Great. Um, you do successfully put back into place, but you've definitely, how much do I damage the pod? you've definitely scraped up the sides a bit. Let me uh, see if it's extensive damage or if it's just like... We just got tools. Uh, ooh, it is quite extensive damage. Oh! <laughs> what the bro, man? It looks as though um, there, there's like these two clip pieces that are supposed to magnetically clip together. Um, one of them is just busted off completely. Uh, and it's just barely being held by the magnets at this point. So Is yeah. this something we can fix once we are out of it? Uh, you have no idea. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say it. Do I know? Is this something we can fix? <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> Let me just uh, make a, 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 an X of destruction next to this spot as well on your ship. I'm so good. Who is that? <laughs> Ooh, good, good work, good work. Okay. Meanwhile, good while work. the two of you are trying to reconnect, uh, Zaxa and Minerva, mm. the, you are in the uh, wreck area, and you can kind of look out, and you see them kind of slowly coming in, and then you hear them just, you feel it. So I was going to say, shutter. see us, they just, <laughs> as we crash into the side. The, two, the sides kind of collide, and the glass almost shatters on both sides. Oh, yeah. yeah, but it, it is, um, I would say, successfully... Uh, Clipped itself. Docked? Yeah, cool. it's a, Can I get successfully out? Successfully docked. Um, that's a good question. Do you want to open the door? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
No, I'm just going to sit in the pod. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good uh, Miner- idea. Minerva and Zaxa, what are the two of you doing? Probably still laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the last thing I was doing last time. I'm still doing yeah. it because it's still funny. <laughs> Minerva did give a chuckle last time, but I feel like now, after hearing the crash, he's <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, yeah. One more thing we have to yeah. fight. <laughs> <laughs> I think Minerva's gonna get because like they're like not coming out of the pod, so I think no, I'm probably either gonna... getting lit still because I know we're gonna get yelled at. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gonna, she, she's gonna like stand up and just go and like knock on the door. <laughs> Do we also get near her? Oh yeah, you can hear the knock on the door. Um, so I will exhale Genevieve and then. Uh, the... <laughs> Yeah, it's up. Are you coming out? Uh, we're probably gonna land soon. Yeah, yeah. We should. Okay, we know that we're attached. We should. O- we can open the door. Can I see from this side if it's like attached in a way that the door will open and it'll be fine? Uh, make a perception check. Okay. Please. Actually, make, all just make it an investigation check. <laughs> yeah, you're more like looking <laughs> at specific yeah. elements of it. Ooh, that's a 19 plus 3. Yeah. Ooh, all right, yeah. Taking a look at it, you're kind of trying to, looking at the little bits of glass that are there, you're trying to match up where the door should be mm-hmm. compared to where it is on the mothership. Yeah. The, the pod is docked successfully, but it's slightly tilted so the doors don't match up exactly. So, uh, so there's a bit of a gap this. of space. Um, between the pod and the like mothership. Space, like space? outside space? Space space. Like outside space. space. So we yeah. shouldn't open the door. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it's up to you. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> this is way worse than when I broke the shower. Just <laughs> You know what? Actually, actually, just stay in there till we land. And then we can open the door. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, it, it's docked correctly, but there's still a little, a little bit of space, space between the pod and the ship, and we should open it when there's a breathable atmosphere. <laughs> Fine. So we just have to sit in here? This is all your fault, you know. What? I mean, otherwise you'd just be sitting in the rec room. What did I do? Use your eyes, Blanc. We'll land as soon as we can. Just hang on. <laughs> Says the one with giant eyes. <laughs> uh, you hear over the comms. <clears throat> uh, what was that? Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go to the cockpit. Um, uh, hey, Captain. Uh, they, um, they had a little bit of trouble redocking the pod to the ship, um, so they're going to hang in there until we land. Great, so is this something I should add to the list of repairs that yeah. needs to be? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, um, yeah. Great, uh, I don't really have a budget for that. I have a budget for like fuel and supplies, but. <clears throat> I've got, I've got a budget for some things, and if, if not, I mean, there, there's always jobs on these cards. We can always find something to That's true. pick up the credit That's with. true, we could definitely uh, get some credits from there. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, I, I suppose we can uh, just head into their atmosphere and um uh it, i haven't been here in a bit are they are they still docking on the islands do you know what i know about? yeah you know um yeah yeah they are actually all right so i guess we'll head to the closest one mm-hmm. all right uh should be about 10 15 minutes all right, i would cool. prepare yourselves to uh head on to some real land for once oh my god <clears throat> oh that's gonna be great hey what day do you think it is no idea. No <laughs> idea. It's been a while. Well, we've been gone for a lot. Like, I mean, 10 days? Well, yeah, but I've been off his guard for longer than that. Right. All right, well, we'll figure it out when we get there. <laughs> can we hear him in the pod? Uh, no, you can't. Yeah. Zoxa probably can from where he is. Um, oh, I'm laughing too loud. I can't hear it. <laughs> yeah, so Plonk and Tita, you, you're in the separate pods. So you cannot hear what's being talked about in the cockpit. Tita, do you think... Do you think Minerva's gonna be mad at me? Uh, I mean, probably. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't want Minerva to be mad at me. Last time she was mad at me, it was kind of scary. Yeah, she's kind of scary. I don't know, just keep a little profile. 
as we walk out, it's just us. <laughs> <laughs> try to blend in. Yeah, try to blend in. It's just me and her. <laughs> Zox, are you doing anything at the moment? I'll throw or another L at you. I'll, st- you I'll start. Um, if if we're we're gonna be we're, we're approaching the thing, I'm gonna go get ready then. Okay. Get get all of my books. Okay. I would Which... also like to go grab. Um, oh wait, no, I already did this. Never mind. I was gonna the say extra that. sword. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I already did that. Um, so you have your spell book, your journal, your um, notebook. Notebook. Yep. Anything else? Um, I mean, all my equipment, but uh, of course. Um, okay. And I don't think I need anything else. I have my. Ooh, wait, how many dots do I have? <coughs> Use. Probably like five. Uh, Fifteen darts now. Fifteen darts. All right. All right. So you've got your supplies. Um, obviously, Plonk and Tita are going to have to grab their supplies once we land. I don't have my thing with me? What thing? Like my axe I don't have anything on me? Well, uh, my... I feel like probably not. You were just like tooling around in the... Do I always have my stars on my stars? No, no, no. If we were just tooling around, I probably didn't have anything on. So are you grabbing anything else, Minerva? <clears throat> um, no. I'm just going to like make sure that I like have everything and then I'm just gonna like sit down on the couch and just like like I'm not gonna sleep but I'm just gonna rest your eyes yeah so they're not so bloodshot she's gonna take a dad nap (laughs) nap. (laughs) (laughs) right. so is there anything that Plonk and Tita are doing in the last 15 minutes oh I gotta get high (laughs) (laughs) well at least I am I just threw threw an edible at her because she needed to calm down yeah he threw another edible at me So, down. Tita, I will say that your supply it's probably of getting moss low. is getting Definitely. pretty low. Um, I'm getting nervous about that. Yeah. Uh, your your edibles as well. Like, Is that you, something I could get at this planet? You don't know. You have to find out. Oh. I'm going to have to bother Minerva for money after we just messed things up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the, the ship makes its way to one of the docking islands. It's a nice calm and relaxing descent there's no you know crashing or breaking of any of the supplies of the ship for once it just lands you can see there's um a couple humanoid figures outside the ship they've got those like those uh runway <laughs> oh, lights. No, no, no. yeah the flashlights the flash, <laughs> runway lights uh kubrick sets down um and opens up the rear hatch so that everyone can uh head down obviously now that you and and, and plonk or you've landed the two of you can exit um, when you open the door, there's a gap between the the two pieces, like at least you know six inches. So if yeah, if you were in space, all kinds of course of... I'm gonna like stick my like little pincer in it and be like, <laughs> <laughs> like this is my whole hand. I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna like look at it and be like, who did that? <laughs> <laughs> and go to my room. Yeah, I'm to sure. grab to grab Retrieve my, my items. All right, so you're gathering up your supplies. Mm-hmm. What are you gathering up, Plunk? Um, just like I I have my daggers on me mm-hmm. but i'm just gonna like grab my bow and like put it on my back and you have your pack obviously the yeah. one you always keep and, with you yeah. um did pack. you put your disguise kit in there um yeah just in case yeah yeah makes sense in there. all right i'm just grabbing um, my stuff tita you got your pickaxe you got your pickaxe little sash and thing. my little stars and whatnot yeah. yeah your pouch to hold all your weed or it's your like, oh your goodies. moss accoutrement moss. yeah all right uh, Kubrick's like, hey, um, Captain, uh, I think I want to head out with you um, and uh, see if we can pick up some extra supplies that are necessary. That sounds um, like a good idea. Depending on what day it is, I may want to enjoy the evening festivities. <laughs> depending on what day it is, of course. Depending on what day it is, but I'll make sure that the ship is locked up well. All right. um, can I go find Minerva? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. She's in the cockpit talking to Kubrick right now. Um, after they descended and landed. Okay. Um, where are you right now, Zoxa? Preparing your stuff in your room? Uh, probably, yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah, if you want to find the note notes. notes. <laughs> um, about how much money would I need to ask for? Would I know that? No idea. This is a completely <laughs> alien planet to you. Well, no, because, yeah, but I would know how much it would cost me, like, if I was buying it at home, so I'm obviously going to guess it's going to be the same. Well, so. you never bought it at home. You always Oh, that's right. I kind of found it in the field. <laughs> My meadow of moss that I frolic in <laughs> happily. It's rolling around. Um, so I guess I'll go find Minerva, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah you, easily enough, you can find her in the cockpit with Cooper. <clears throat> so 
so I'll probably be in there scratching above my eye with my goggles. Um, so, uh, Minerva, mm -hmm. I, I was wondering if I could maybe have some money when we get to the planet. For what? Uh, I don't know, I'm lowering my moss supply. I see. <laughs> well, we've got a couple things we need to take care of first. But oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Sure, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be able to find a way to get you what you need. Far out. <laughs> Stuff that's usually that it's usually easy to find on Isgard, depending on what day it is. I guess I'm just gonna turn and go. <laughs> I'm just. And <laughs> as TT, as you start to walk away, Cooper leans over to Minerva and's like. Should we tell him about like how the weeks work here and stuff? I don't know. Honestly, I think no matter what it is, he's gonna like it. Uh, that's, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Yeah. He'll he'll find out. He'll see what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, he he grabs a small pack, throws that over his shoulder, and he you know exits on down the ramp. Uh, you're more than welcome to follow. Yeah, I think um once like eventually like. We're all at the bottom of the ramp. I want to like talk to everyone. Family really meeting. Family meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as you're all stepping out, you can see Kubrick is already talking to one of the humanoids that was kind of um, flagging the ship down, uh, and the guy's like, <laughs> "Looks like you got a lot of uh, damage to this thing, huh? <laughs> uh, we could definitely fix it up for you, but it might be a little expensive." Cooper's like, "Yeah, well, we're aware." Um, <laughs> what, what do you got for like a, a ballpark price? And he's like. Yeah, well, we gotta uh, connect their gear, and what else is wrong? And he, Cooper's like, I'll just take you on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts showing the guy around. Uh, but yeah, the four of you make it to the base of the stairwell, mm -hmm. um, and you are on this, uh, it's, the ground is like a, it's like a, not tar, but it's, it's, it's kind of metallic, almost. Okay. Um, and you can see that there's lights built into it for like the landing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it it's just kind of stretches out pretty far, mostly to the edges of this flying island. It looks like this is just one of the docking spots for sh uh, incoming okay. ships. How, how do we get to the other islands? I mean, I know and as you say that, Plonk, you see out of the corner of your eye, there are these transport uh, ships that are completely open. They just have small little walls on the sides. Think... Um, I don't know what it's actually called, but in Star Wars, when they're in the desert, they're out flying on that uh, oh, okay. little thing right over the desert. Yeah. It's kind of, it has like railings, but nothing really else to protect you from falling off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's some of those, and you can see those whizzing back and forth between the, the floating oh, islands and whatnot, and, and the mainland. Yeah. Very, very fast. You ask uh, pretty, Yeah, pretty, pretty fast, yeah. yeah. Minerva Scary. just points to those when you ask. <laughs> I look over and I'm like, we have to take any of those? Well, how else do you think we're going to get to the mainland? It'll be fine. So before we go, we need to talk about some objectives. Um, we need to fix a lot on the ship. I know Kubrick right now is talking with um, an engineer that I believe that person was an engineer. Um, they're on the ship. They're going to go over some of the damages. Hopefully, I'm expecting Kubrick to come back with some sort of price estimate. And if we don't have enough, we might have to find a couple jobs. And usually jobs are pretty easy to find on Isgard, but I don't know. Be prepared for She some... says jobs, and I'm kind of just like patting my pickaxe. Like, <laughs> yeah. <it's> like... <laughs> yeah. So be prepared for a little work before we can actually leave this place. The other thing that we want to do is Zoxa, we talked about this. Plonk, we talked about this. I think, Tita, you were in the pod at this time, but. After Isgard, we are hoping to get to Zox's planet, um, because it seems that there can be some answers, some business to attend there, but we're going to need to find a way to get across the frozen impossible ships, <clears throat> so. I thought it was my planet that we need to go to. Feywild? Yeah. I believe uh, oh, both, yes, both of them were talked Feywild. about, mm -hmm. but okay. both of them you would still have to go oh. past the frozen um, oh, we're, we're in the same place. Mm -hmm. same, same system. Same quadrant, if you will. Mm -hmm. oh, so essentially, will. <laughs> essentially, we're here to make a lot of modifications to the ship, and we're most likely going to work until we have enough credit to do that. But <clears throat> we might not necessarily be working every day because Isgard has its own like built-in work schedule throughout the week. So first, we need to figure out what day it is. Can I like raise my? I'm gonna raise my little. Paw. What What does that mean? 
So basically, Isgard has five days in a week. Four of those days are spent working, and then after the fourth day is done, that evening is a, a celebration, if you will. Mm. Um, and after that, people usually just sleep <clears> on the fifth <throat> day and then get back to work on the fourth. Yeah, I know what this means. Oh, I'm gonna raise my claw. <laughs> <laughs> my whatever it is. Your pincer claw. My pincer. <laughs> yes, Tita. So. If we're gonna work here, and then we're gonna go to his planet, and we're gonna go to her planet, are we gonna go to my planet? Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> sure. I mean, what business do you have? Um, well, the last time I was there, I spilled coffee all over Kit, and then I had to leave my friend, and I was just really upset because I didn't get to say bye, so, like, I just really want to go back. Hmm. Well... Who is Kit? If we're not dealing with a potentially world-ending entity, then I guess we can have time. Post-conflict. Yeah, we kind of have more important things to do. <sighs> like, going to my t- girlfriend? Tita does raise a point. If we're going to your home planets, we do owe a visit to Tita's eventually. Eventually. But we have other matters that might be a little bit more pressing. More important! A lot more important! To you, maybe. You almost died! It doesn't really matter! I'm just gonna, like... <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see if we can find some drums after Cooper gets back with a price estimate, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, and as you're saying that, Cooper comes stepping down with that guy. The guy's like, hey, Just let me know uh, if you want me to take a look at it for you. He's like, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, sure thing. He comes down, he's like, Well, we might have a problem. Uh, it's, he's thinking maybe 350 to 400 credits to deal with our issues. I told him if it's, you know, it's not life-threatening that the shower's broken, so he might take off, uh, some uh, of the total, but we definitely need to make sure that the guns are working, and we need to make sure that that pod is attached correctly. Agreed. Alright, well, time to get to work. I suppose, unless we can find a better deal somewhere, but it surprised yeah, me that we're not. we gotta flag down one of those transport skiffs. Alright, let's go. What are you shaking your head for? It's perfectly safe. <laughs> Just don't stand too close to the edge. It'll be fine. Uh, be prepared. I don't know if they've gone up in price, but it is one credit per person I, for the transport. It, it's fine. I can, All right. I can pay for this guy. <clears throat> Very well. Um, so he, he just put, kind of puts his hand up, starts waving, and you see one of the pods <laughs> flies over so fast. <laughs> We're <ball. laughs> And just lands in a, a cloud of like dust, kicks up around <laughs> Which you. I'm probably loving. Cause it's, I want to <laughs> sit. I'm like, dust again. I want to sit in the very middle of it, holding on to whoever's leg is right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. The, uh, the, the person flying this vessel um, is uh, nothing. Well, you would have seen them before, Zach. So this is something you've seen on your planet. Um, in Minerva, obviously, you are completely aware of these. Uh, but Tita and, and Plonk, you've probably neither of you have ever seen these. Um, they have they're humanoid, um, and they have like a bluish green skin, um, almost scaly, uh, kind of, and they have like these big fin type ears. Um, a what is it? A triton. It is a triton. Yes, the Triton is uh, flying this, this ship. Yes, <laughs> is also, yes. You you are familiar with these from your home planet because they do travel um, through the river of Oceanus to your to to the impossible depths and to your planet. So you have seen them not often, but there are some. I immediately <laughs> walk up and start asking you questions. Um, hello. What? When, when, you when, when did you get here? How did you get here? Um, well, I, I, I flew in, um, and uh, <laughs> just not maybe uh, ten seconds ago. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not on on this platform. I mean to this planet. Um, I've lived here my whole life. You have? Yes. Why do you find that odd? I, there are plenty of Tritons here. I'm not... <clears throat> uh, well, okay. Um, uh, we'll... I'm going to look at Blanc and be like, what's up with this guy? <laughs> Well, I'm just kind of sitting in the middle. Of right, you're like, and I'm just kind of like, can we just go? Uh, I'm just gonna like go up to Zoxa and like nudge him and be like, maybe don't ask that of everyone. There, lot, lots of different people live on Isgard. But he's a Triton. 
she she's a triton There are many, many It's difficult to tell, I know. <laughs> <laughs> there are many different kinds of people that live here. Can, can we just go? Interesting. Yes, yes, Maybe. we can, young one. Um, and she's like, all aboard, and she kind of looks back, and you're all sitting there. There's no seatbelts of any kind. She's like, everyone ready? No. <laughs> We're ready. Very good. And then she, <laughs> like, so fast. What is your destination? Um. Shouldn't we have told you that before we left? <laughs> How long are we gonna be in this? <laughs> and you yes. see, like, there's other. Then it's not just these skiffs that are flying about. There are all different types of transportation. Mm -hmm. um, some that are open to the air. Some that are completely covered with some type of glass or metal. Um, and they're just zipping about in all different directions. There's a couple times that are close calls for the two for skiffs <laughs> colliding, but. It's always, you know, a near miss. <laughs> Do I remember what the closest city is? Breathing in a paper bag. Uh, it's, so it's, it's, it's excited. Isbar is pretty it's much excited. one giant city. On, okay. It's it, right. pretty yeah. much everything just encapsulates the entire mountain. It's all built into the okay. into the walls and embedded in there. Am I sitting next to Plonk? Uh, well, she's she's laying on the ground holding onto someone's well, leg. Well, I just, if she was close, I was just gonna, you know... Well, she's nice either... with my little arms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's either attached tell. to your leg or someone else's. Yeah, so it can be yours. Okay. It's me. Um, so yeah, so you're just zipping through everything, and yeah, well, she's um, waiting for a destination. Yeah, I'm. So are are there like? So where are we even going? Are know. there different like named like regions of Isgard or? Well, there there are um, three sections. Um, the mountain itself is called Isgard, mm -hmm. um, but there are two other sections. So our domain, the Triton domain, is uh, Muspelheim, which is the, the lower water level of, of this. And we most of our cities are built underneath the waves. Um, and then there, if you're looking to go inside of the volcano itself, uh, that is Nidabellir, and um, that's where you'll find that the Azers and fire giants. Um, it's up to you which location you'd like to head to first. Mm -hmm. We'll head into the mountain. Very good. And she continues to zip around. Anything that you would like to talk about while you're zipping through the air? Many things. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. She's ready. When did your family first come here? Um, well, uh, we've had three generations of Tritons here in Isgard. Um, that's a cue. <laughs> my, my brother is, is well-traveled. He uh, travels up and down Oceanus quite often. How exactly do you travel? Well, he swims. Yeah. Swims, swims. <laughs> We're quite good at that. Is this is this a skill to be learned? Swimming? Um, it can be learned. Yes. Good, good. I'm just gonna like look at her. <laughs> Please, uh, it, it, he's just enthusiastic. Please excuse him. <laughs> oh, it's no problem. We're almost there anyway. <laughs> Uh, you have about another minute or so of travel. Any final questions you'd like to ask this Triton? I think he's satisfied for now. All right. <laughs> I would just like to ask her, what what day is it today? Oh, uh, today is uh, Zubindag. Mm -hmm. um, so this evening, it should be quite festive around here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, and then... The, the the skiff kind of there's there's a like a docking spot it just kind of right up to it and just stops and you all slide a couple inches forward uh, when she she halts the the vessel. Can I try to hold Plonk in place? <laughs> <laughs> Make a strength check. My eyes are just shut and I'm just like hmm. seventeen. Well, eighteen. It's easy. Yeah, she's small enough, and you're you're laying kind of you're kind of crouched down, so okay. you gotta yeah. You, Kind of hold her. I got you, girl. I don't notice that I slide. I'm still taking notes. Yep. <laughs> Can Maybe. I just like put an arm out to keep Zoxa from like sliding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Arm him. <laughs> I, I don't even notice the arm. I just sliding. So keep, keep writing. <laughs> now she she pulls up to this. Um, it's kind of like like a dock or a pier, but it, it, it juts out from the mountain, maybe 50, 60 feet, um, and it's just a platform of that silvery metal. Um, with like crystalline uh, platforms that are built into it. 
all the way down. It's kind of like a gang, uh, like a large gangplank to the mountain itself. And she's like, "Well, um, this is uh, this is it. It'll be one credit a piece, please." I can I can turn that. Okay, so if you want to mark off five credits. Yeah. Um, she's like, um, "You are in the more touristy area, um, but if you head." Uh, Due west, uh, you will make it to many of the other businesses and uh, some of the villas as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're looking for a hotel, uh, there is a hotel uh, resort called Oceanus Views, not too far from here. Okay. Um, just a little ahead for, in this direction, she kind of points out for you. Mm. Um, are there any other questions you have about Iskart itself before I uh, head out? Oh, I am all set, but thank you very much. Very good. Um, thank you for riding with us, um, and have a pleasant day. And she... <laughs> Away. I may have more questions later. <laughs> I want to kind of like crawl onto the ground and just be like, I never want to do that again. And then you kind of get a glimpse over the edge of this thing because there are no walls or anything. It's just like a flat yeah. plank all the way out, and you just look hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet down. As you're going over there, I'm just gonna be like, don't look down, plonk. <laughs> you're like crawling your way to the the main uh, edge of the mountain. Um. So. You are out on this this pier, this dock, um, about 60 feet from the mountain itself. What would you like to do? All right. So I just look at Cooper. It's party night. I heard. So essentially what that means is no one's going to be working tomorrow since everyone will be sleeping after the party that happens tonight. So if we want a job, most likely we're not going to start that for another day plus whatever left we have of this day so right. it's gonna be a day and a half before we can actually work anything so and the rest of you you are all in for a treat i'm assuming none of you have ever been here for a celebration of zobendag i mean i've never been here right that's what i mean so <laughs> it, it's incredible um every week at the end of the work week it's just a big festival uh there's um there's a huge, huge parties all over the, the mountain. There's gambling, drugs, clubs, uh, arena pit fights, uh, heavy drinking. So uh, pretty much anything that you would Cold want to anxiety. do. It's like a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it should be a good time. And then tomorrow, everyone pretty much sli- everyone is done partying by 8 a.m. And then everyone sleeps the rest of the day to prepare for the coming work week. When you said mm-hmm. drugs, I looked at Minerva and did like a big <laughs> Minerva, Her antenna kind of like... like <laughs> she, she nods. This is where we're going to find what you need. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so. Can I tell like what time of day it is right now? Uh, it is, it's about midday. Okay, uh, the, right. the celestial sun is pretty bright in the sky at okay. the moment. Alright, so at least we could maybe check around, see if anyone does need a job to be done later in the week. But again, even if we found someone who was hiring people for something today, we wouldn't be working for about a day and a half. Um, what kind of jobs can we even get here? Well, there's... There, there, there's a lot that goes on here. Um, I used to work here for a while. Mostly the type of jobs that I would... That there are a lot of different jobs. But mostly the type of jobs that I would do is if someone needed something like an artifact to be recovered or... I thought you were just going to stop it. If somebody needed something... <laughs> to I would provide it. Yeah. I was like, Yes. Yeah, yeah. There, <laughs> there are people that hire um, people to recover artifacts, to kill monsters. What do you mean recover? Well, sometimes things get lost or stolen, and people with the money will hire someone else to go get it back for them. I look over at the like... Alright, so are you walking down the main strip? I think, yeah, I think we'd probably, like, head west, since that's where our Triton lady said that we could find some of the businesses and some of the places. Yeah, so as you're passing by, a couple places that catch your attention, there's a pub called What Ails You. Um, Why isn't that a real pub? Right? (laughs) 
there's, there is the hotel resort that was mentioned earlier called Oceana Spews, and it is massive and sprawling. Um, it's pretty much built out onto the edge, the cliff edge, and it overlooks Oceanus. The, or uh, not Oceanus, sorry. Oceanus is the river. Uh, it overlooks um, Muspelheim, the ocean domain of the Tritons. Uh, and it is gorgeous. There's a bit of um, like uh, of, of, of creeping fog atop the, the ocean below. Um, and you can just see out with the beautiful rainbow prisms that are just, you know, refracting all over the place. It is a gorgeous view. Um, you pass by a club called Halos and Horns. <laughs> um, <laughs> there uh, is a brothel that you pass by called The Come and Go. <laughs> um, and you begin to pass by a coffee shop called the Heavenly Roast. Aaron, my mom is watching this. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't mean for that to be inappropriate. Of course it is. Your minds, it? Yeah. your minds made it inappropriate. Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> I mean, your mom's pretty cool, so I think we're good. She's going to love that you said that. (laughs) So as... (laughs) That was for you, you, Mom. (laughs) As you are passing by the heavenly roast, you hear a voice call out, Minerva? I'm just going to swivel on her. (laughs) And you hear, is is that really you? Of course it is. You're, You're wearing your mask. I'm assuming I, I know. Uh, at this point, you, you, when you whip around, you see um, a good acquaintance of yours, someone that you had met in the past, uh, named Diabra. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's just sitting there, legs crossed, a little cup of tea, and she's just sipping away. And she's like, how interesting to see you back on Isgard. Honestly, I didn't think I'd be back so soon. What well, are you doing here? Well, we, me and my associates here have come by to get some repairs for our ship. But, well, it's no, party nice night. Nice to meet you all. I'm Diabra. T2. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Oh, hey. Oh. Um, How have things with you been, though? It's been good. Um, I've actually uh, taken a solo mission at the moment. Oh. Um, it, you know, Tyr has, uh, he believes in me enough to send me on a, uh, my own mission. Congratulations. Oh, that's pretty exciting, I must say. Uh, though, how long are you in town for? We're going to be here um, probably for a good portion of next week. We need a significant amount of credit to repair our ship, so we're going to be looking for a couple jobs. You know of anything? Um, perhaps. Uh, tell me a little bit about your companions. What are they? What can they do? Can me and Tita kind of like walk oh, away? Yeah, of course. No, you can. I'd, I'd love if they spoke for themselves. Actually, <laughs> Tita yeah. and Plunk already started to walk away. <laughs> We're just kind of walking away, like doing our own thing. Or not? Well, <laughs> or not? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if I like her yet, so I'm just kind of walking away. <laughs> well, out of the two that are going somewhere at the moment, apparently, um, the little one is very sneaky. Mm. She. She knows, she just appears in places where you wouldn't expect her to be. Um, that could be useful. She's got some magic, not that much that I know of, but she's got some. She's good with the dagger. Um, and then the taller one with the four arms can punch really well with those four arms. Ah. And he has experience. Your bodyguard, Minerva? Hmm? Your bodyguard. Don't forget about the your bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Do I have my pickaxe on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You got strapped to your hip or whatever you want to do. Oh, no, my back. Your back, yeah. He also has a lot of experience tunneling underground. That could be useful for what I'm working on currently. Oh. Um, and what about the blue one? Zoxa, do you want to speak for yourself since the other two didn't want to? I'm sorry. <laughs> this is my old companion, Diambra. Hello. She might have a job for us. But she ah, wants to know a little bit about our abilities. Someone of some use. <laughs> she wants to know a little bit about our abilities, though, if you wanted to explain to her. Well, I'm Zaxazior, and uh, I am a map maker, and... 
can't think of the word right now. <laughs> Archaeologist. <laughs> I wanted to say architect, and I was like, no, it's not. That's not Almost. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what types of maps have you uh, have you made? You said you're a cartographer? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I've only mapped out my own planet, but... Which is? I am from Vidalk, of course. Oh, I'm I, I'm not well aware, but I I, I, do, I do know a bit about uh, Vidalk, uh, the Tritons that that head through there. Uh, give us a bit of information from time to time. How how recent of information do you have? Well, I haven't talked to any Tritons in quite some time. Uh, maybe a few months ago, possibly. Mm. Never mind then. Very well. Um, well, my name is Diabra. I am one of the elite guard to the god's tier, um, and he is, uh, his domains are more the formalities of war, justice, and treaties, if you will. Mm. Um, and I, I'm one of the Valkyrie. And she, uh, yeah, she kind of hits her breastplate a little bit and makes a little bing sound. Um, I do Charm. believe I have a job that you might be able to help me with. Oh. Uh, Minerva, I'm willing to split it 50-50 with you if, uh, if you're willing to join. Um, that would be about 500 credits for yourself oh. and your team, of course. Um, but actually, we should probably speak somewhere a little more private about this. Agreed. Um, do you wish to speak just to me, or can I... Oh, no, I would love to speak to all of you. Okay. Um, as she says that, she kind of looks, or you both look around, and Plonk and Tita are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> uh, where have the two of you... We are like, never up to anything good. I don't know, where are we? Like, what's near us? There's all kinds of, like, all those places I just... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do I smell the coffee thing? Does that, do I... Well, you, you're... Um, oh, yeah. The Amber <laughs> is sitting outside the coffee shop, outside the Heavenly Roast. So, yeah, so, we, I, so I we're definitely. I think we went in. Yeah, we brought yeah. So you're up at the counter. Oh, okay, yeah, but wait, do we even have any money? Exactly. No. I was waiting for that. Gosh. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. She's... Do you have any samples? <laughs> you guys like, uh, of, of what? Coffee. Have you not had coffee before? I've I only mean, had it a couple times, and I really like it. I mean, uh, you're supposed to say no. No, we have never had it before. <laughs> right, well, um, <laughs> is, is there a, a particular style of coffee that you would like to try? I can only give you one free sample. There's different kinds? There's a whole board of all different flavors, and so then my eyes just really like. <laughs> yeah, we're both. I'm like, they go from like the little squints to like my like super sleepy eyes are like. <laughs> we're like. Can I try that one? Ah, the boysenberry. Quite an interesting choice, but yes, I'd be more than happy to uh, whip one of those up for you. And he gets you hear like the little. Uh, stirring thing and then in the background and whatnot, he comes back with this tiny, tiny little cup. And he's like, Here, if you like it, I'd be more than happy to make you another. But of the proper size. She takes like a teeny, tiny sip and then just shoots it back. And it is heavenly. Their roasts are heavenly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna run out to Minerva and try to get money. <laughs> just because like, oh, it, you, what? Okay. She's gone. Yeah, don't uh, worry about her. And, and for you? Um, do you have anything thick? Ah, yes, of course. And you see him uh, stirring up something. It's definitely thicker than the coffee that Plonk just had. Okay. Uh, not as thick as the mud that you're okay. used to, uh, but he hands like a tiny little uh, like Dixie cup. Okay. To you. All right, so I'm going to take my little pincer thing and like... Do like a little poke, see like the drip action. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's like a, consistency. It, it kind of like collects and is a slow drip. It's not like a quick drip, like a, a thin liquid. Okay. Thing. Do I, can I smell things? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna smell it, and then I'm probably just gonna. Yeah, you chose um, the the French vanilla macchiato. Oh, great. And... <laughs> that was so thick. That was the thicker one. <laughs> Um, it's it, heavenly. 
so delicious. Okay. Uh, and he's like, uh, now if if the two of you, uh, well, she's gone, but if, if uh, <laughs> you would like to uh, purchase one, I'd be more than happy to make a full cut for you. Um, so that I'm just going to kind of look, do, like, she was right outside? Yeah, 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 like. So then I'll just look and be like, um, yeah. And then that's it. I'm just going to, like, because like, she's going to get the money, so I'm just okay. going to say, like, yeah, like, make it for me. So whenever you're speaking to Diambra, Zaxa, and Cooper are there as well, yeah. and then Plunk comes <laughs> racing out of this small, uh, heavenly roast coffee shop and kind of, like, skids to a halt in front of you. <laughs> You can't have money if it's for nothing. Oh. <laughs> oh. I need money for drinks. For me and Tita. You said it's supposed to be a party. Let's party. <laughs> That's not until later tonight. But I'm gonna I'm gonna look, gonna look at Cooper. This is the place that you wanted to go to, right? What this coffee shop? Yeah, the Heavenly Rose. Didn't you mention it the other day? Nope. I thought you did. I don't think so. I've never even been to this place. <laughs> no, I swear to no, out of character. We had this conversation. <laughs> okay, out of character. No, because like remember like when Minerva and Kubrick were like repairing the ship and Minerva was asking about Azaziel and then the two of them were talking about Isgard and they were both like, Oh yeah, we're both from Isgard. And then Kubrick was like, Yeah, there's this coffee place. I swear to god this happened. Well, maybe it did. I don't I don't remember that. <laughs> Kubrick's losing his mind. Clearly. May not have been yeah. displaced. His yeah. hat's a little too tight. <laughs> I swear to God, this his happened. He has a flipped jacket. Cutting off the circulation. I'm going to go back and watch last week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. But anyway. Um. Yeah. Not not this place, but you know, all there's other coffee shops around. <laughs> this is the last time you can ask for me for money until we find a job. Okay. The last time. Okay. <laughs> you hand over the little chip. Oh, I'm gonna go in the last time. <laughs> <laughs> so Tita, you're standing there waiting, and you see the two of them approaching. I thought you were gonna ask me how much it was, but I'm gonna wait. Skirt back in. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So he's. He's. Prepared, he's uh, did you? Uh, did you want me to prep that coffee for you? you can wait. Did they come back in? You can see the two of them just walking in now. Oh. oh, I'm running in. Running, running sorry. Oh, so I'm gonna, well, first I'm gonna, like, look at you and do, like, the, yeah, no, like, the face, okay, and then, um... <laughs> I uh, got it! <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, for me, I guess. The same one? Uh, sure. Very good. And you're obviously already at the counter, and it's, right. hey, um, <laughs> are, am I making one for you as well? Same thing you had before? Yeah. Very good. It takes a couple minutes, and Minerva, you're just kind of standing Change. idly by. He takes it. It's uh, it's a credit and a half for the two coffees. Right. So <laughs> take that out. Um, okay, and he hands you your two cups. They're about this tall, pretty decent size. Hers is It is very hot. I don't know if anyone else saw it, but hers is already gone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that... Wait, is there a lid or no? It's very hot. Yeah, I spit it out immediately. <laughs> <laughs> is there a lid on it? Um, I didn't drink the whole thing. No. I just took like it's just a sip. Like, it's like a mug almost. As All right, well, as... I'm going to stir with my pencil. <laughs> as soon as it touches my mouth, I spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go, wow, that's hot. <laughs> yes, I was going to tell you to be careful, but you just immediately started guzzling it, so... Okay, let's go. <laughs> <sighs> Have a great day. <laughs> no, no. You as well. I, I'm great. They're already gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this whole time, you have been outside with Kubrick and Diambra. Mm-hmm. Um, and Diambra's kind of just, at this point, now that Minerva's gone, she's kind of just turned back to her tea and is kind of sipping it, leaving the two of you and Kubrick just standing there. Yeah. Kubrick. Yes. You're not from this planet, right? I am, yeah. What do you know of the Triton here? Uh, there's vast cities under the water. 
um, here. Uh, I can't tell you how many tribes. I don't really know much about them specifically, but there's they, they make regular trips um, throughout the Oceanus River. Uh, the Oceanus River actually connects um, many different parts uh, of the, the galaxy together, at least in this system. So you could get all the way from here in Isgard up to Mount Celestia, uh, where, where the gods reside for the most part. Um, you could get down to Arborea, which then connects to the uh, Impossible Depths. Um, you can go uh, further to the north to Elysium. Uh, it's a beautiful place there as well. But yeah, there's a lot of places that you can get to utilizing uh, the Oceanus River, and it's much faster than traveling through uh, regular space. That's very good information. Thank you, Cooper. Yes, of course. And yeah, while we're having that conversation, the rest of you return. Um, and Diambra is like, um, do you have a villa or a hotel room or anything that we can... No. We just got here. Very well. Um, well Any place you have? Uh, I don't really have a specific place. I've been traveling around trying to uh, look at information about... Well, I don't really want to talk about it here. It's fine. Um, it, we could potentially just get a room at the hotel, or um, I don't know what, how long you said you're about a week or so here. Uh, it might be a good idea. Yeah, depend, depends on how long we can make the permits <laughs> to repair our ship, and I guess it depends on how long this potential job might take too. Right. Um, hopefully not too long, um, mm. but I don't even really know where to begin. I've been kind of running in circles with this. Hmm. While you're talking, can I like share my coffee with Plunk? Yeah. <laughs> Are you two just taking sips well, you, back yeah, and well, forth and trying so. the different stuff? Yeah. <laughs> no, I feel like you didn't spill the whole thing. You started to guzzle and then okay. shot a bunch out, but you yeah. still have a decent amount. The first amount. mouthful, I just yeah. spit everywhere. Yeah. We're just like, <laughs> clinking, <laughs> sipping, <laughs> clinking, sipping. Well, in a few hours, it's about to get rowdy. Mm. Uh, we should probably go quickly. Um, the hotel's not too far from here. Yeah. What are they, yeah, like, the destroy store. everything? Um... Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes and no. It's it's fairly rowdy. Um, there, there are guards that can keep people safe and whatnot, and and but we'll just leave it at that. Gets rowdy. It's like a ho- the end of like a, a champion like hockey match. <laughs> yes. When when the the team the stands are just trashed. Yeah. Is it just like rioting in the streets? Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like well, there's there's one car on fire. I was just gonna say, <laughs> definitely a car on fire for sure. Car on fire, just people everywhere running around like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds fairly accurate to what you're going to see this evening. Yes. We celebrate hard on this guard. <laughs> but yes, we should get a room before things start to. You know. Right. So she'll lead you back. Um, she's like, would you like to just go to the Oceanus Views? The What's rooms are a bit expensive, but it's quite lavish. Yeah. Uh... I'll split it with you. You sure? Yes. All right. Why not? Very Wait, good. so we're not going to the party? Oh, we're going. We're just getting a room first. To talk. In a more private setting. Okay. About what? Oh, well, when the two of you walked away earlier, Deandra, <laughs> Deandra was telling Thank us about... Thank you, condescending. <laughs> Deandra was telling us about how she has a potential job opportunity for us that would get 500 credits for our group. What kind of job? That's what we're going to talk about. Can I get more coffee if we get money? No. <laughs> no. I said you weren't allowed to ask me for anything related to money until we get more credits. Yeah, but I don't I don't Walk, I don't want to hear you ask anything about money until we get more credits. <laughs> and then I look at you with the face like, yo, does this mean it's messing up like me? Because we already talked about how oh, I'm buying drugs. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm giving you the eye. Like, I'm not. I didn't do, like, I'm not being bad at that. So. That, that was her. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> we will talk later. <laughs> but, right? Literally. <laughs> So, the group of you make your way to the, um, the uh, nope, the hotel resort Oceanus Views. You step inside, and there are beautiful Corinthian-style pillars 
um, that pretty much line the, the inside of this uh, large uh, open lobby type area. Um, at the far end, there's a, a large desk with a couple different attendants. Um, there's a fountain right in the center, um, a bunch of seating all around. Um, vegetation and plant life is um, pretty thick throughout as well. Uh, it's it's a very nice place. Vegetation and plant life? Make an investigation check. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you just say? Investigation check. Oh, great! Plus zero. <laughs> Six. Six, yeah. You search around. You walk in, you see all this vegetation, and your eyes just light up, and you start running around from, like, uh, plant pot. I'm doing my pot. leap. I'm, like, <laughs> leaping from plant to plant. Um, basically and unfortunately, no, you don't find any moss in there. There's, there's a lot more of the... Do I see anything that I find interesting? Uh, there, There's definitely some uh, weird-looking uh, plants. Can I take some of them? Um, you can try, sure, yeah. What do you try? You Wait. start plucking and you hear one of the attendants, uh, excuse me, uh, person, <laughs> if, if you could not touch our vegetation, that would be lovely. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Make a slight of hand check. <laughs> sure. Nat 20! Yeah. <laughs> She's like, Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And then he turns back to the yes! guest in front of you. Uh, what you clipped off was you clipped the stem of this very intricate and it seems very delicate pink flower that um, uh, right where the stamen is, it has like uh, yellow um, dots that kind of fall into um, I don't know, the little cut part of the flower. Okay, yeah. Uh, the pump. It's, it's deadly nightshade. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? No, <laughs> you don't know. Make, make a nature check. <laughs> oh my god, stop. <laughs> Alright, wait. So I'm, I'm just shoving this into my pouch. No, yeah, I can make a nature check because I want to know if I know it. Well, it's plus zero, so we'll just see. Fifteen! Ooh. Um, you've definitely not seen this before. Okay. Um, but you kind of like, you kind of sniff it a bit. You kind of like look it up and mm -hmm. down. Um, and it has a very uh, interesting... Um, pollen or dust to it. Okay. Uh, it's got like this this pink pollen that when you kind of shake it a bit, it just kind of dusts around. Again, you don't know too much about it, but investigating kind of. Okay. You... When I just like puffed the pink cloud, did anything happen to me? Because I like breathed. It. Make a Constitution saving throw. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry guys. We're just trying oh, to get no a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> um, 11, 12. 12. Um, you feel your stomach instantly gets like hard and solid, and you're like, oh, like you have really bad gas pains. Great. Um, but after some time, it fades away, and you think that maybe a, a little more concentrated of a poop, and you might have had some issues. Interesting. Yep. So the rest of you are heading over to the counter. Yeah. Uh, so Diambra is going to head up with you, Minerva, mm -hmm. um, and she just goes up and she's like, I would like one room. There's six of us? Two? Maybe? I mean, how many beds are in here? I'm, I'm planning on only using it to speak, but uh, if you need oh. a room, then you might as well get one while you're here. Two rooms, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And then you hear the attendant um, request 30 credits in total, 15 per room. And they ask, uh, how long will you be staying? I'm just, can I, like, just turn to the Umbra as if to be like, how long is the job gonna take? Hopefully not more than a couple days, but I can't say for sure. It could get a little complicated. We need at least two days. Hmm. Or three days. Very well. That will be uh, for the two rooms, um, and you're staying, oh, yes, uh, for the rest day. Very good. Uh, that will be in total uh, 33 credits. Mm -hmm. um, and. Honestly, not bad. Diabra's like, hey, <laughs> let me pay for one of the nights at least. Are you sure? <clears throat> yes, that's not a problem. That can be for our discussion. Okay. So she puts in 11 and she, you know, right. 22 is the, the balance. Right. Um, the The attendant hands you two keys. Uh, you are in rooms 403. And four twelve. Thank you. 
friends. So we're do... not next to each other. Not next to each other. <clears throat> um, yeah, so you're just kind of hanging out in this lobby now. Zaxa, Plonk, are you doing anything while Minerva's dealing with the, uh, the attendant? Um, I want to be looking at the plants as well. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. Anything in particular or just kind of browsing? Just kind of looking around. Actually, wait a minute. After I got ill, I'm probably going to be like, yo, Plonk! Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I want to like see if there's any like soft leaves or anything. Mm, yeah, yeah. Give me uh, an investigation check as well. Eleven. Eleven. So you're you're going around. Um, some of these actually look familiar, like they're native to the Feywild. Woo! <laughs> um, you, you do eventually, you know, going through none of the ones that were Fey Feywild esque, but you do find a plant that is almost fuzzy, like soft, like a pillow. Do I, or a blanket? So do I know like what it is? And what you it don't is know specifically what that plant is, uh, but you do find a nice soft one. It's not one that's from the Feywild. You do find one. What are the ones that are from the Feywild that I would know? Um, one of them is a weed, but it looks beautiful. So okay. even though it's a weed, people, some people like to still keep it um, on display. Yeah. Um, there's a few different flowers similar to like an orchid uh, and lilies. Mm -hmm. um, there are palm looking, uh, not full trees, but s like they're, they're little fat palm trees that okay. have like the, the leaves that come okay, down over. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. Okay. Is is there any sand next to these plants, or is it all just like regular dirt? I want to. It, pick... it looks like regular dirt, yeah, for all of them. I want to pick one of the fuzzy leaves. Okay, you pick a fuzzy leaf. I want to pick a fuzzy leaf. And the stem that you pick it from <laughs> begins <laughs> to it begins to bleed out like a white liquid very profusely to to drip onto the floor. Okay. I want to pick. I want to pick the leaf, run up to Tita, and be like, "Feel this. It's soft." Like, Tita, yeah. you feel, but you can't tell that it's soft. I was gonna say, I can't even tell it's yeah. soft. So I'm gonna be like, "Yeah." <laughs> yeah but, and then I'm gonna run up to Zaza and go, and go, and go. You have to feel this. It's so soft, and throw it at his face. <laughs> Give me a, a quick dexterity check. <laughs> dexterity check. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. Uh, uh, ten. Ten. So you you run, you're about five feet away from uh, Zach says you run you're like look it's soft and you throw it it's like. <laughs> His lands onto the ground. I probably didn't even notice her. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm taking notes on everything in here. Okay. There's a ton of different weird races that you've never seen. There's some that are really tall and they've got like spikes coming out of their back. There's some that are regular humanoid size that have hair that just kind of flows on its own in the air. There's all kinds of weird and interesting people for you they're to take not, notes on. They're not weird, they're just unique. Unique? <laughs> <laughs> unique we're, we're individuals. Unique. Weirdly unique. There you go. <clears throat> okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Diambra looks to you, Minerva, and she's like, um, so do you always have to herd them like this? Yeah. yeah. I see. Um, <laughs> chop, chop. We have rooms. Let's go. Okay. Is that how you do it? Usually. Oh, good. Oh, I have to leave and I'm like, somebody feel it! It's soft! Come on, Blanc, let's go. <laughs> so you, uh, you Just round... bring it with you. <laughs> Deambra leads you around a corner. So when you get there, there you kind of turn the, the corner and it's almost like, whoa, uh, right off the bat. But there is a giant standing in the hall, at least 20 feet tall, big, bristly red beard, and <laughs> long hair coming down. And he's got huge biceps, rippling muscles, and he's just standing there, like just staring down the hallway at the direction of where you came in. You're coming in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What do you want to do? Oh, 
Have I stayed? Probably. I'm probably going to stop there, like getting there. Slash, do I know if this uh, is a thing? You probably haven't stayed here specifically, okay, but yeah. you know that <laughs> you know that fire giants um, are a regular inhabitant yeah. of um, uh, Nidavellir, which is within the volcano. Mm-hmm. So it's possible that one is just hanging out here. I must have seen a giant before. Um. Mm, no, probably not. No, no, not in the Feywild. No. <clears throat> so I'm this thing, gonna... twenty feet tall, he's not hunched or anything. But the ceiling is quite tall in here. I think maybe to accommodate him or someone of his stature specifically. Mm-hmm. And he's like going up as you round the corner. Are, are we going up? <laughs> are we going up? Are we going up? <laughs> we were in rooms what four oh four yeah so, right. yeah, so we're going up to yeah. the fourth floor. Yeah. He's like, step in. And he opens like this uh, metallic gate like thing. And it's this kind of wiggly, rickety box that you can walk into. <laughs> are there any stairs? Yeah. This would be And he kinda just points over his shoulder at a door. I think I'll take the stairs. Why? Do you not think I'm strong enough? That's not it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be fine, Quan. Okay. And Diabra just steps inside. Cooper follows everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. I will inside. sit in the middle of it, holding on to <laughs> Tita's leg. <laughs> what for? Four, please. And you just feel the thing kind of jerk and then slowly start to rise as he, you can see him just pulling a chain. Oh, okay. I thought he would pick it up and throw us. You just see him like bend over and grab it and just like throw you. (laughs) Yeah, you slowly. It hooks on to like a fourth, the number four is the king. Yeah. Fourth floor. I'm, I'm silently judging the inefficiency of this elevator. <laughs> <laughs> so it's slowly moving its way up, and you hear a ding as it hits every floor, um, and you hear the fourth ding. And then yeah, I but, know but the ding that you hear is it like a bell. It's not a bell or ding. some type of metal. You just hear the the giant from below going ding, <laughs> <laughs> ding <laughs> as you reach each floor. I'm um, gonna look at. I'm gonna lean down to Bong and be like, oh, I gotta do that fast. Like we have four arms. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say to have uh, have him roll a perception check when he says he's already four floors. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely didn't hear that. Um, oh but yeah, you make it to your floor and the t- doors kind of open up and there's a long hallway. Each room is labeled just like a typical hotel. All right, let's go. We would know nothing. Whichever one of our rooms is, let's go to the closest one. Yeah, four hundred three yeah. would be the fir- the closest one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and the key opens the door right up, and it's a nice room. There are two beds in there, um, about queen size beds. Uh, lap of luxury over here. Um, <laughs> Can I pick Blanc up and like, throw her off? <laughs> the Easily. <Yeah>. Easily. <laughs> it's very soft. Oh, it's it's so softer soft. than you would have expected. So soft. Everybody feel how soft it is. <laughs> <laughs> Tries to start throwing the bed at people. <laughs> Um, there is uh, a window that gives you a beautiful view of Oceanus, uh, and um, I keep forgetting what it's called. It's like Muspelheim or something. Yep, actually, I got that right. Muspelheim. <laughs> um, yep, down below, and you can see the the turquoise waters below. You can almost see about 20, oh my God, 20 30 feet down <laughs> under the water uh, because the water's so clear. Um, but yeah, you're now in your room. I'm just gonna turn to Diabra. So, what's this job? Well, um, how much do you know about the elemental chaos and the Great Inferno just going out? (laughs) What do you know about it? Well, um, Tyr um, believes that there is... um, a different Solar. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of him, but uh, Sadkiel. Mm. He uh, is the Solar of battle and strategy. He's suspicious, and he believes um, that Sadkiel could possibly have something to do with the elemental chaos and the destruction of the Great Inferno. Oh. 
specific say. specifically what? <laughs> I'm not sure, and neither is Tyr, but he has that feeling. Yeah. So he has asked me mm-hmm. to look into this. Um, I haven't gotten too far, but unfortunately, now that the Great Inferno has fizzled away, yes. devils are coming in in swarms. Uh, I did sh- hear about that, actually. We were on a merchant ship a couple days ago. He did mention something about more fiends than usual yes. being in the system. And Tyr believes that Sad Kiel is looking for more power, and obviously if he is at war, and he has his armies at war, that increases his power significantly. I'm not sure yeah. if there's a, a monetary incentive for him, or if he's just looking for that power. Mm. And it, this is this is a, a quite the accusation to hold against a solar. That's no, why we're trying to yeah. keep it under wraps at the moment. Exactly. That, um, yeah, that sounds huge. Um, I'm not really sure how to go about this. He does have a villa here on Iskard, so mm-hmm. we could potentially look into that. Okay. Other than that, I don't really have much for leads. So your job is essentially just to investigate Sadkiel, see if he has any motive for this? Essentially, yes. Okay. Can I ask who hired you? Tyr. Tyr himself? Himself. Oh. You're a Valkyrie. <laughs> That's Makes right. Sense. Don't forget it. Makes sense. <laughs> um, okay, so... Using the skills of stealth, and you know, if we have to go deep into the mountain, possibly tunneling, those could both become useful. Yeah. And what did you say that you could do? <laughs> I do many things. Oh, well, I didn't hear any of this. I'm just jumping on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I am a mountain man. <laughs> right. Okay, so a map maker. Um, we shouldn't get lost. Then. I make maps. Hopefully, that is the case. You're a card talker. Cooper just kind of he's like, um, I fly the ship. I fly the ship. I fly the ship. And he just kind of like puts the steps in down a little bit, and <laughs> leans back. So, okay, are are we? Does Tyr want some sort of artifact that proves that Sadkiel is doing? something suspicious what like what what exactly what what exactly is Tyr looking for so that we can receive payment well you you know how how gods are they speak in riddles um i did not really get too much information um i was planning myself to go and scope out the villa um but I haven't done much. I, I, I've been looking into um, some of his known associates and whatnot, um, mm. but... Like who? Well, uh, there is someone who... His name has come up once. Uh, Gurkis? I'm not sure if you've heard of Gurkis before. Uh, Have I? <coughs> he, is, he is one of the... Well, he, he owns a business called Gurkis's Fine Metal Works. Mm-hmm. Um, he is... Uh, a fire giant, um, and I believe he resides uh, within the uh, within the volcano itself in in the Velier. Um, I have I've I've heard rumors that they may may be uh, keeping in contact for whatever reason. It could just be uh, he's getting armor for his soldiers, but yeah. I I don't know for sure. All right. Um. Hmm. Well, this is. A possibility of one of many jobs that we could do on this planet. Um, do you mind if I talk with my companions about if we want to accept? Or of not? course. Okay. Can I have the other key? Of course. Yeah. Toss it, and she'll yeah, she'll even just head out to the other room. Come get me when you've discussed. Thank you. Uh, yeah, door closes behind. Cooper's like, sounds like an easy five hundred uh, credits. I mean, it's. It does if we can actually bring back some sort of proof that Sadkiel had something to do with this, which we all know he didn't because it was us. Yeah, well. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> what do the rest of you think? I mean, I was just jumping on the bed with Plonk, too, so. <laughs> do you, I wasn't do you think we still get paid if we can prove that Sadkiel had nothing to do with it? 
I don't know. Well, may- maybe we would. Maybe we would. We'll have to ask. Or do we want to make sure that they think he had something to do with it? You want us to frame an angel? I then stop jumping on the bed. <laughs> when we're both like frozen, the slow head turn. Like while I'm still technically employed by another angel. Yeah, why not? Terrible, terrible plan, Zyphor. Terrible plan. Yeah, what terrible what? plan. If I uh, if I do recall, it was it was us that started this, right? It was. And what if someone finds that out? I mean, it'd be bad for us, but I don't know if it would be worse than us trying to frame a solar being. An angelic solar who has power that is incomprehensible to all of us. Well, as far as I'm aware, there's only a couple people who know that we had anything to do with it. One is that Azer guy from that village. Uh, brazen? Uh, he, brazen, brazen, yeah. whatever his name was, something like that. I didn't even meet him, I was in the ship still. Um, but him, and then obviously, <laughs> Isaziel knows something. So it might, it might be worse for us if people find out that we did it, because there are people that know that we did it. And if we then go on to frame an angel, that might be worse for us. Instead of people just finding out that we did it. But I like the idea of if we can prove that Zadkiel didn't do it, then maybe we could still get compensation. I guess we could ask Deandra that if we want to go ahead with this job. Alright. If not, <clears throat> we'll just be on this guard for longer, because we'll have to get the credits somewhere else. And hey, 500 credits, that would take care of all the repairs, and we'd have plenty more. You're right. So, what are we gonna do? So... Okay, the angel that I work for is named Azaziel. He is one of two Solars that kind of oversee things throughout the galaxy. The other... Solar, angelic being. The other one is named Sadkiel. And Deombra, the associate who's been with us today, who I've been talking to, has been hired to investigate him to see if he had anything to do with the destruction of the elemental chaos. I don't know if we if we will still get paid if we can prove that he didn't, <coughs> but that is something that we can ask, I suppose. But so we're gonna investigate a guy that we know didn't do it? I'm okay with doing it as long as we're not trying to frame him. I think if we can prove that he didn't do it, there still could be a chance that we could get money from it. And, you know, if well, since we do know that he didn't do it, it should be easy to prove that well, he had nothing to do with it. So maybe it's just easy credit that we can make. Technically, nobody really did it. It just happened, and we were there. It happened after we got too close to it. It's not your fault. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm gonna try to hide it a little bit. Oh, I was just gonna put my little arm around you. <laughs> I just I can see you you stopped jumping on the bed when you heard about the angel thing. Uh, framing an angel. And then you just kinda sat and then slowly slumped off and rolled under the bed. I can just picture this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any other conversation that you'd like to have? I'm just gonna scratch my head a little bit. <laughs> what do you think, Zaxel? Your brain has gotten us through many things already. Wow. Focus. Focus. (laughs) Focus. Framing an angel would not 
be the best course of action. No, I agree. So we take the job if proving innocence will still get us paid. Okay. And if not, we can find other work. Alright. Okay. We can let Deombra know. And we don't mention to anybody that we were there the day that that all happened. We might want to think yes, that's a yes. problem people did that. Oh. <laughs> I, th- I think it was kind of directed to <laughs> other <laughs> <men>. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to let it yeah. <laughs> You just hear like a small like. <laughs> Wait, can I go like? Can I like sit like? <laughs> like I'm I'm not like. Can I like sit like next to the bed so that I can like, just like see under? <laughs> you like slink down the wall like that. Like, yeah. She like turns away. <laughs> she just turns. Bonk, I promise none of this is your fault. I'm not blaming you for anything. Silently blaming Plonk. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that if other people knew that we were there, it would look bad. But we didn't do anything wrong on purpose. It's not your fault. Okay? Okay. And I guess you can get coffee once we get money. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay. <laughs> Any further discussions about the job? Well, she says the thing about copy, I'm giving her the eyes again. Oh, because... yeah. I already said we could find stuff tonight. Tonight's the party. It'll be super easy. Okay, I'm just checking. At this point, it's probably about 6 o'clock, and you know the partying starts around 8. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah. Alright, all right, anyway. I'm a little nervous about this party. <laughs> I mean, it's not mandatory. Well, she's like. Plonk is, Plonk is 65 years old, and Verdon's lived to be, like, 200, 300 years, like, 300 years old, or whatever, so she's, like, she's, like, a, like, late teen, pretty much, in Verdon years, mm-hmm. so she, she's, like, never, like, done anything like this, and she grew up on a farm, <laughs> so, like, she yeah. grew up on a farm, and then went to a, another village that was still like and she just lived in a castle as like a um a uh, a servant so she's never like seen or done anything like that mm-hmm. so she's kind of like nervous about what's about to happen i don't blame you i, I think i'm going to go get <coughs> uh diambra again all right so you head out to go get diambra mm-hmm. and that is where we're going to take our our break real quick be back in about 15 minutes. Hope everyone's enjoying. We'll see you soon. <sighs> what do you want to know about me exactly? My name is Minerva. I come from the planet Isgard, and I'm very good at finding things. That's about it. All right, fine. I'll explain a little bit more. I'm not necessarily a bounty hunter, but I do travel across the galaxy in pursuit of different targets. The galaxy is a very big place. There are many wondrous things, of course, but with the good, sometimes comes the bad. I eliminate the bad before it becomes a larger problem. I work for an organization called the Galactic Utility Intelligence Logistics Task Force, also known as GILT. Great name, huh? We're a rather undercover group, inconspicuously keeping watch over the many planets, pinpointing any threats that may arise and disrupt the safety of civilians. The majority of GILT is essentially a surveillance system that relays information back to our leader. However, when a threat to the people does arise, be it an angry monstrosity or an ancient fiend, that's when my team intervenes. We are a subset of GILT, known as the Special Protection Investigative Tactical Exploration Team, or the Spike Team for short. There are six ACMR on this team, including myself, each one of us with a different skill set. I contribute the ability to track down our target once we're in its proximity. I'm not bad with a blade or two, either. Working with the team is alright. I wouldn't call all of them friends, but they are the people I'm closest to. Whenever we're not investigating a galactic threat, we're most likely just passing time on our starship. For me, this mostly means I'm in our training room, running through various simulations to keep my skills in good condition. I also enjoy a good game of cards every now and then. However, for some reason I'm always quite bad at trivia night. 
So I guess I'm supposed to be like <coughs> talking about myself or whatever. I mean, I don't know, Green. I'm pretty boring. All I do is work and blow glass pipe. I mean, being a bat has made a ton of moss in my off hours. Pretty much working all the time, though. Come from a long line of vaders. Uh, that means excavators. My family has worked for the deep organization for like hundreds of aeons. Oh, I should probably tell you what the spell that is, huh? Deep stands for the discovery, excavation, and expansion of pandemonium passages. We're a little more progressive than those other vaders, the dry green hierarchy of excavation mining. No one wants to work for them. Frown pieces of friend. Oh, sorry, shouldn't be swearing, green. So back to my job. I mean, I'm pretty good at it. Kind of hard not to be when you've been basically bred for it. Got my great granddad T sip pickaxe right here. You probably wouldn't think by looking at me, but I'm a little quicker than most. Even got promoted to work dust detail. That's the development of the underground super tunnels. I know, far out, right? One time I got off draft green, came out in this crazy big moss patch. Totally wild. Met this Formian. Thrives and boards don't usually vibe green. I dig him though. We grew close. He's the Dren, the real Frelin Dren. Growing up, I lived in the small clan of Verdun. My ancestors were goblins who left their planet to live amongst elven communities. The relocation was hard for them. It took a while getting used to their new planet, but once they got the hang of farming, it was all uphill from there. I was never as good of a farmer as they were, though. All I wanted to do was play. Hide and seek or swing. It's kind of like capture the flock. Those were my favorite. I love the adrenaline I get from a good hunt. Waking up to your farmhouse engulfed in flames in the middle of the night, all you can do is run. When my village of Mandrakta was destroyed by a swarm of ravenous pixies, I had no idea if I would even survive. Racing out of my smoke-filled home I grew up in, I ran straight to the barn. Mom always taught me to keep a pack of supplies ready in case anything happened. Just grab your pack and go, she'd always say. So I did, and a good thing that I did too. Disappearing quickly was what saved my life. Since then, I've lost all contact with my family. I don't even know if they're alive. The small group of us that got out went to live in the closest elven city, Mithrandir. This is my home now, and I have to say, it was tough getting accustomed to the way of life here. They're not a farming community, so it was hard to find work. I didn't know what I was good at. I thought back to my time in Mindrocktown and what I enjoyed back then. Then it hit me. I love the thrill of the chase. I can do that. Becoming a spy is the best thing that's ever happened to me. But I have to say, it's a little bittersweet. Working for the royal families, doing a job I love, is like a dream come true. I couldn't be happier. But I'm only able to do so because of the misfortune of my village. I'm hoping my hard work will make my ancestors proud. Cycle 12. Strange looking creatures appeared today in the North City Square. These aliens called themselves elves. Their pointy ears and flowing hair intrigued me. They speak of different lands, impossible lands. Those without water or those filled with fantastic creatures. I must learn more about them. Cycle 39. Each cycle since the arrival of the elves, the Dalkin people have attempted to duplicate their extraordinary effects but to no avail. I reach my 40th cycle soon. Finally, I will be able to lead my own studies. Cycle 66. Without the elves' odd tricks, we have now resorted to building our own way to travel to other planets. The technology they seem to have is many cycles out of our reach. Even so, I believe there are other ways off this planet. Cycle 100. My excavation begins today at Zerathu City Ruins. Managing to rope in both Vudila and Zixat into my hypothesis, I have much to discover. Not even the elves know what lies beyond the impossible depths. I know I will find answers there. What do you want to know about me exactly? My name is Minerva, I come from the planet Isgard, and I'm very good at finding things. That's about it. Alright, fine. I'll explain a little bit more. I'm not necessarily a bounty hunter, but I do travel across the galaxy in pursuit of different targets. The galaxy is a very big place. 
There are many wondrous things, of course, but with the good, sometimes comes the bad. I eliminate the bad before it becomes a larger problem. I work for an organization called the Galactic Utility Intelligence Logistics Task Force, also known as GILT. Great name, huh? We're a rather undercover group, inconspicuously keeping watch over the many planets, pinpointing any threats that may arise and disrupt the safety of civilians. The majority of GILT is essentially a surveillance system that relays information back to our leader. However, when a threat to the people does arise, be it an angry monstrosity or an ancient fiend, that's when my team intervenes. We are a subset of GILT, known as the Special Protection Investigative Tactical Exploration Team, or the Spike Team for short. There are six ACMR on this team, including myself, each one of us with a different skill set. I contribute the ability to track down our target once we're in its proximity. I'm not bad with a blade or two, either. Working with the team is alright. I wouldn't call all of them friends, but they are the people I'm closest to. Whenever we're not investigating a galactic threat, we're most likely just passing time on our starship. For me, this mostly means I'm in our training room, running through various simulations to keep my skills in good condition. I also enjoy a good game of cards every now and then. However, for some reason I'm always quite bad at trivia night. So, I guess I'm supposed to be like... <coughs> talking about myself or whatever? I mean, I don't know, Green. I'm pretty boring. All I do is work and blow glass pipe. I mean, with that, I spend a ton of moss in my off hour. Pretty much working all the time, though. Come from a long line of vaders. Uh, that means excavators? My family has worked for the deep organization for like hundreds of aeons. Oh, I should probably tell you what the spell that is, huh? Deep stands for the discovery, excavation, and expansion of pandemonium passages. We're a little more progressive than those other vaders, the dry green hierarchy of excavation mining. No one wants to work for them. Friendly pieces of friend. Oh, sorry, shouldn't be swearing, Green. So, back to my job. I mean, I'm pretty good at it. Kinda hard not to be when you've been basically bred for it. Got my great granddad T Sip pickaxe right here. You probably wouldn't think by looking at me, but I'm a little quicker than most. Even got promoted to work dust detail. That's the development of the underground super tunnels. I know, far out, right? One time I got off draft green, came out in this crazy big moss patch. Totally wild. Met this Formian. Thrives and boards don't usually vibe green. I dig him though. We grew close. He's the Dren. The real Frelin Dren. Growing up, I lived in the small clan of Verdun. My ancestors were goblins who left their planet to live amongst elven communities. The relocation was hard for them. It took a while getting used to their new planet. But once they got the hang of farming, it was all uphill from there. I was never as good of a farmer as they were though. All I wanted to do was play. Hide and seek or swing. It's kind of like capture the flock. Those are my favorite. I love the adrenaline I get from a good hunt. Waking up to your farmhouse engulfed in flames in the middle of the night, all you can do is run. When my village of Mandrocktow was destroyed by a swarm of ravenous pixies, I had no idea if I would even survive. Racing out of my smoke-filled home I grew up in, I ran straight to the barn. Mom always taught me to keep a pack of supplies ready in case anything happened. Just grab your pack and go, she'd always say. So I did, and a good thing that I did too. Disappearing quickly was what saved my life. Since then, I've lost all contact with my family. I don't even know if they're alive. The small group of us that got out went to live in the closest elven city, Mithrandane. This is my home now, and I have to say, it was tough getting accustomed to the way of life here. They're not a farming community, so it was hard to find work. I didn't know what I was good at. I thought back to my time in Mindrocktow and what I enjoyed back then. Then it hit me. I love the thrill of the chase. I can do that. Becoming a spy is the best thing that's ever happened to me. But I have to say, it's a little bittersweet. Working for the royal families, doing a job I love, is like a dream come true. I couldn't be happier. But I'm only able to do so because of the misfortune of my village. I'm hoping my hard work will make my ancestors proud. Cycle 12. Strange looking creatures appeared today in the North City Square. These aliens called themselves elves. Their pointy ears and flowing hair intrigued me. They speak of different lands, impossible lands. Those without water or those filled with fantastic creatures. 
I must learn more about them. Cycle 39. Each cycle since the arrival of the elves, the Dalkin people have attempted to duplicate their extraordinary effects, but to no avail. I reach my 40th cycle soon. Finally, I will be able to lead my own studies. Cycle 66. Without the elves' odd tricks, we have now resorted to building our own way to travel to other planets. The technology they seem to have is many cycles out of our reach. Even so, I believe there are other ways off this planet. Cycle 100. My excavation begins today at Zerathu City Ruins. Managing to rope in both Udila and Zigzat into my hypothesis, I have much to discover. Not even the elves know what lies beyond the impossible depths. I know I will find answers there. <laughs> and welcome back. Uh, before we jump back in, I do want to mention that Priya was absolutely correct uh, in talking about me mentioning the coffee shop. Uh, I actually mentioned it by name and didn't remember. Uh, so not even a generic coffee nope, shop. Nope, the specific the one. The heavenly roast. The heavenly roast. Uh, so, yes. Kubrick has been there many times. And She's hiding something. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We're so. going to like a big plot point that should have never happened. <laughs> all of a sudden. Well, I wasn't supposed to tell you guys that. Damn. <laughs> the coffee shop is so important all of a sudden. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to jump back in. The, the team had just finished having a conversation about whether or not they would like to take the job with the Abra. And... Minerva is on her way to retrieve her at the moment. So you head out to go to retrieve her. And on your way, is there anything that the three of you would like to be doing while Minerva's gone? We're just in the room. Kubrick's there as well. Just the three of you and Kubrick. <laughs> is he playing with his jacket? He, yeah, he's, he's kind of fiddling with one of the buttons. Uh, Thinking about his lies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, <laughs> damn, they're on to me. <laughs> Bed. Okay. Come out yeah. front of the bed. I'm just kind of like, eyes a little puffy. Yeah. <laughs> and instead of like fully like jumping on the bed, I'm just kind of like. <laughs> it's a little bounce. Just trying to like. Well, make you still have that caffeine better. high, so you're still you, yeah. you got the energy. Yeah. So I'm like moving, but like reluctantly. <laughs> just kind of like. <laughs> I walk over. I grab the bed. <laughs> <laughs> to try to make her be in a better mood. <laughs> Zaxa, for you? Uh, I'm taking notes, but facing the wall. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you idiots. I don't yeah. even want to look at you. Yeah, <laughs> literally. So, I don't trust Cooper anymore. <laughs> <Take> <laughs> so whenever you head to room 412. Mm -hmm. Knock, knock. Yes, Minerva? Um, we talked about it. Could you come back? Door open. What's the verdict? Well, we'd like to join you, but we were wondering if, would we still get compensated if we proved that Sadkiel is innocent? I don't see why not. Um, Tyr is very clear. He wants okay. us to either find out if he's implicated or clear his name. Okay. Then we're in. Very good. Um, well, I don't feel like doing any work right now, since we're about to uh, start partying. Um... Is there anything that your group would like to participate in this evening? I have to go ask. Um, well, let's go. Mm -hmm. She'll follow you to room 403. When you get there, you see Plomp just kind of somberly <laughs> bouncing on the bed. Teach is next to her like, <laughs> trying to shake the bed to make it crazier. Zox Zox is facing, the wall. <laughs> facing the wall back to you as you enter the door. And Kubrick is just there kind of like playing with buttons on his, on his duster and, you know. <laughs> He is so Very exciting room. Open the door. Oh. <laughs> These people. I take a deep four of psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she just walks in and she's like, so how's it going? Hi, uh, so good. I'm still just uh, <laughs> shaking. Yeah, I don't say anything. I'm just like. I'm shaking the bed with my little arms and then I use like my other arm to be like, yeah. 
right, well, the party's gonna start soon if anyone wants to head down. I drop the bed immediately, <laughs> and then I don't, I'm like, oh yeah! Alright. <laughs> Amber looks at to all of you and she's like, well, um, anything in particular you'd like to do? There's plenty of clubs around. My favorite is Halos and Horns, but, mm-hmm. you know, there are many others as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I've been there a couple times. How I, are you now? On, well, only, only when the fighting pits are too boring. <laughs> Sometimes they are, but tonight uh, at the Fighting Pits, there's a pretty exciting match going on. Oh. Uh, there is, oh, I have these notes somewhere. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in the Spirit Pits this evening, uh, there's Kirgoff, who is an ASMR. Uh, his nickname, Heaven's Gate, uh, is versing uh, Vishwas, the Triton, um, also known as the Incapacitator. Mm. So are we going to go see Vichy Swaz or no? <laughs> <laughs> Vichy Swaz? Oh man, I'm so upset because I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, no matter what event you go to, there's heavy drinking. You'll probably be able to find any drugs you're looking for. I um, definitely my antenna like... Mm-hmm. like Minerva, Minerva just looks at you and just nods. <laughs> Um, what would everyone like to do this evening? I've been to pretty much all of these places before, so I would like to leave it up to you all. Well, I mean, my vote is usually for the fighting pits, but that's just me. Keep in mind, we have eight hours of partying ahead of us. We can do both. You know, you're right, actually. (laughs) Oh, let me uh, correct myself. Twelve hours of partying ahead of us. My eyes get super big. I'm like... Twelve hours. Twelve hours. <laughs> <laughs> so we pumped. could hit the pits first, and then go to the clubs afterward. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds good to me. Unless anyone else objects. Is it safe? No. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, you, you don't. You you can stay here if you want. I don't want to make you feel pressured, and Isgard can be pretty intense sometimes. Yes, that's fair. I want to have fun. Okay. Before anything happens. <laughs> All right. Well, if if you want to leave at any point, just I'll, just I'll say so. To be somber. I will. I will mention just to keep in mind when you're at the fighting pits, the uh, at the spirit pits, uh, you may absolutely carry any weaponry. Uh, but if you go to any other clubs, you must leave them at the door. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I know the drill. Find my mate. <laughs> I kind of rub the pickaxe, like um. You'd have to leave it behind. You could leave it in your room at the hotel, or you can leave it with the concierge at the the uh, at the club. Um, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take it with me. We can come back to the room before we go to the clubs if you want. Just to drop it off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Plonk, if there's any time that you want to leave, just just say something, right? Okay. Cooper's like, I will say, Plonk, if you need to leave, I'm not leaving. So... Tell someone other than Cooper. <laughs> I'm I'll, definitely I'll, enjoying I'll, myself I'll you. tonight. Uh, you're so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be saying that once I uh, hook you up with what you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I look at Plunk and then I'm basically just like, I take we, it back. I take it. We, we can't leave until we do that. <laughs> He kind of, he kind of, Cooper kind of uh, settles up over the next to you, and he kind of puts an arm around you. He's like, "Once eight o'clock hits, pretty much any alleyway you go down, you're gonna find what you need." Far out. Yeah. So, fighting pits. That's yeah. what I'm doing first. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, let me think. Do I remember where I'm going? Yeah, I do. Follow me, everyone! And Cooper just starts walking. And he, you see there's like an extra, you know, um, like he, this chipperness in his step as he moves a- along. He's his... really whipping that jacket. Right oh, now. it is flowing behind him he for like sure. He like tips the hat at whoever he sees. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I roll my gigantic eyes because I'm so sick of him with the coat. <laughs> Fantastic. 
<laughs> uh, so are you all leaving the hotel to make your way to the spirit pits? I am. Yeah, I guess. All right. Oh, so. Nothing else to do. <laughs> And yeah, as, as you're moving through the streets, um, there really isn't many people out and about. You see like one or two people heading from one business to another, or someone maybe leaving a villa and heading to a business, but the streets are very empty. However, as you're heading to the spirit pits, as soon as eight o'clock hits, there's this loud, almost like a, a clock ding from, from a distance that chimes and tells you what hour it is. Um, it chimes louder than pretty much any clock bell you've heard before. It kind of echoes throughout the entire mountain. And people just start to pour out of buildings, out of villas, covering the streets. They have bottles they're already starting to drink. You can see people heading down alleyways, making shady deals. Um, a, a lot of the street vendors put like neon blinking lights up and it just becomes a rave in the streets. <laughs> Uh, music is playing from who knows where. Just all different music playing in all different directions. Um, all of the, the bars and whatnot all, and, and the, the pubs open up their doors just wide and just let it's just free for all. Everyone can go in, go out. Um, the clubs that you pass by, they have um, large ogre like bouncers outside to you know make sure that there's nothing crazy going on. Uh, you do see a bunch of ASMR walking the streets in armor with spears and shields as well. Minerva, you know that these to be the guards. They keep the peace. If anyone is generally, if it gets pretty rowdy, it's not a big deal. But if people start injuring others, the guards will come in and, and start you know taking names. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, you make your way and you, you, you continue to head west on the mountain and it kind of slopes down a bit. Um, and eventually after passing through these people, you kind of knocking into people at times, they're throwing beads over your heads as you're walking by. Um, think of this kind of as Mardi Gras on Isgard can every like, single week. Can I like walk in the back of the group to make sure that like they don't, like none of them get like lost in the crowd? Absolutely. Give me a perception check to... to uh, keep an eye on everyone. All right, and this is gonna be with disadvantage. <laughs> it's exhausted over there. Jesus. All right. <laughs> um, that's a nine. Nine. Yeah. You're keeping. <laughs> you're keeping your eye on the group as best you can. You're keeping one of your eyes. On the, yeah. the crowd is thick, and people are bumping into mm -hmm. all of you and each other. Mm -hmm. Um, for the three of you, quite odd races. Uh people with flames for hair like you've kind of seen with the Azer before but they're not Azer um, there are uh, different types of these like goblinoid creatures similar to you but not as advanced um, and plenty of ASMR tritons there are even Azer out and about um, they're not within the volcanic part of the mountain at the moment but yeah you make your way down uh to the spirit pits and these things are packed and the way these pits are there's multiple pits um and each one has different battles going on the sides of the pits are kind of dug out into benches almost so you're kind of sitting on like rock and mud but it's 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 smooth and it's comfortable um and there are vendors coming around in the stands they're handing it like We've got ales and whiskeys, and they're just coming up with drinks. Uh, there's a, a purveyor of fine joints as well. Um, coming around with that. Would anyone like to make any purchases? I'm definitely elbowing Minerva <laughs> and doing like the eyebrows. <laughs> she just she nods. <laughs> I can't. I can't ask for any money. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Kubrick's like first round is on me. And he takes out his little okay. chip and he pays and um, he's like, whiskeys, ales, Whiskey. wines, what are we looking for? Whiskey. Whiskey? I don't know. Whiskey. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, 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 not, not whiskey for her. Uh, wine. <laughs> All right, fine. Zaxa? Ah, uh, what would you recommend? Whiskey. <clears throat> Why not? Very well. Would, have, would I have had any of those things before? Um, you've had different distilled liquids that constitute alcohol, but nothing specific to whiskey. Um, uh, what's the strongest? The whiskey, of course. <laughs> that. <laughs> he kind of looks to Diabra, anything for you? And she's like, yes, I would love a whiskey as well, please. He's like, 
coming right up, and you see him kind of run off to one of the vendors. Oh, they he, all like whiskey, huh? <laughs> everyone except you is getting the whiskey. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't think you would like it. <laughs> so he comes back with this tray. He's like, uh, whiskey's all around. One wine for you, and hands you, uh, like, this small, um, like, glass goblet. Everyone else has, like, a big mug. Mm-hmm. He's like... Of whiskey? Of whiskey. Of whiskey. <laughs> this is this is like Party Island, all right. But it's not an island. Oh. It's, not, uh, it's like Party Mountain. Uh, at this fun. point in time, for this particular day of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, I love how this happens once a week. Once a yeah. week. Once a week. <laughs> Only they work so hard, like 10, 12 hour days throughout the rest of the days. So it's time to party, it's and then time. rest day is tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So you can all sleep in pretty much all day. Yeah, so he, he brings these drinks over, starts handing them out, hands one to Deambra, kind of gives her a little bit of a wink, and then uh, he sits down, and he's like, oh, can't wait to see what's coming up. <laughs> um, I'm going to just stir mine again with my pincer and, like, look and sniff, and then... It's it's got a very strong aroma. It's something you're not used to, um, but you're pretty adventurous. Yeah, I'm kind of like choking my wine down. I'll I'll sip it <laughs> yeah, and then you, you got like a deep red wine, mm-hmm. uh, which is everyone's I figured. favorite. I uh, figured it was like a re- it was like a red. Yeah, probably dry like a cabernet. Okay, something along those lines. Okay. Yeah, and then Orvid just takes a big swig of the mug. <laughs> it's delicious. You've missed this. Mm-hmm. You haven't had uh, a whiskey like this in quite some time. Yeah. Uh, so it is. It is refreshing, and it is exciting to be back uh, enjoying the festivities. Are you gonna let loose tonight, Minerva? Are you gonna take your mask off? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know that is. I was gonna ask about that as well. Ever since I've known you, you've had that mask. Ever since anyone's known me, I've had it. Why don't you? What What are you hiding? What does it matter? What makes you think I'm hiding anything? Well, if you're. Wearing a mask 24-7, clearly you're hiding something. Unless it's COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. There's massive disease running rampant in yeah. Iscard right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, Kubrick. If you want to keep getting along, you're not going to ask that question again. Are you talking to Kubrick or DeAndre? Oh, DeAndre's the one I'm talking yeah. to. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, the voices are similar. No, oh, it's okay. Uh, then I'll say it nicer to Deombra. Um, uh, let's talk about that another time. Tonight's it, tonight's a night of fun. All right. Well, with a few more drinks like that, maybe we'll see your face. Only if she you kind of winks at you. Yeah, only if you buy them for me. <laughs> a little eyebrow raise, and uh, as she kind of turns back in the center of the ring, uh, it's not the main fight, but there's it's kind of like the warm up. You got a couple people down there practice battling and whatnot with some swords, just kind of you know getting the crowd riled up. Um, Are they selling foam fingers at all? <laughs> <laughs> they've got everything. Everything they've got those little like clappy hand things. Shout out your claws, yes. just like right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but just makes a hole. <laughs> well, pretty much anything, anything that you'd find at some type of arena or sporting event, uh, they've got all the stuff. Okay. Back scratchers. Of course, they're also oh. coming around with like glow stick necklaces and Whoa. like. Oh, <laughs> did it cost money? Uh, <laughs> Obviously, it really cost money. Wait, did I? Oh, uh, wait, did I get my drugs from whoever was walking by? Uh, you have not yet. Uh, who had? Oh, we never had the money. Are they still by? Can I still do that? Oh, uh, yeah, they're like walking up and down the the uh, the aisles. Okay, so I want to do that. Can I, so can I flag a, somebody down? <laughs> Yeah, you head over, um, and you see that it's this, uh, looks like younger ASMR. Um, she's got, like, bright, bright golden hair and golden eyes. And she's like, drugs, get your drugs here. <laughs> wow. If only. <laughs> I feel like, like Minerva, like, comes over, she's like, all right, Tita, what do you want? Um, I mean, what do you have? Are you talking to her? Yes. She's like... Um, well, we have a few things. Um, there is uh, the the finest Iscardian weed, um, and we have it pre-rolled for you if, if that is something you're interested in. Um, and then I'm like this, like, yeah, lady. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm not rolling anything with my pincers. <laughs> uh, she, she says, uh, we do also carry hallucinotabs, 
which is something that you have heard of before. Um, Do I from like those? Oh, you don't. You. It's not something that you've. Oh, had I just before. have. I've never had. But I just know of it. Well, actually, you don't because you weren't on the ship with Kravikov. No. Everyone oh, okay, else is okay, aware okay, yeah. of, of that item, um, but you are not. Um, uh, and she's like, "There is uh, one other thing we have. It is uh, an aerosol, um, and you kind of just spray it right up your nose, uh, and that's all." This is awful. It's Wait. like drug nasal spray. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the effects are quite potent. <clears throat> right, Tita. I'm Take gonna like. Pick. I'm just gonna right. like look at you though, because like I don't really know. He so I'm just gonna kind of be like a little nudge and like. So like, what's good? What, what's the strongest? <laughs> <laughs> the, the strongest. Um, it depends on the type of effect you're looking for, but I would probably categorize the nasal spray as the most potent. Um, oh, Jesus. Um, what are the price options? Because cause mom is only going to let me have some. <laughs> the spray, the spray should last you um, at least uh, four or five party days. Um, oh. <laughs> Dep- depending on your intake. Uh, but that comes to about. And then I chuckle like, lady, like, because she doesn't know. About ten credits for the for the aerosol can. What about the other stuff? Uh, the pre rolls are <laughs> two credits apiece. I'm just gonna look at Minerva like, what can I have? <laughs> and if you're looking for hallucina tabs, they come in uh, five uh, five credits apiece. Yeah. Or you can get ten for fifty. Oh, sorry, yeah. I was looking at uh, Kravikov's prices. That would actually come out to exactly the, the same. Mm-hmm. Five gold pieces. A, a, They're five dollars each or two sorry, credits. Five, five credits uh, a tab. <laughs> sorry. All right, so I'm just looking at Minerva, kind of like doing the eye, like the you, how much can I get? You, how much can I get? Just let me know. Just let me know what you want, I suppose. But this is the last time you can ask me to buy something for you before we get more money. <laughs> and if it's too much, I will say no. Oh, no. Yes, Mom. Yes, Mom. <laughs> Um, all right, so wait, what was it again? It was 10 for the... So, yeah, so the the, uh, the, the misting spray is 10 credits. Okay. The hallucinant tabs are 5, and each pre-roll is 2. <laughs> Tab that wait, what are the tabs do? Who's in the tabs? Oh, no, all right. So maybe I want the spray and a couple of pre rolls, and then that's it. Spray and a couple of pre rolls. Like, so we're like looking th- at like three, like, like three. three pre rolls, so you're looking at 16 credits. You can get two pre rolls. <laughs> That'll be 14 credits. I'm here to the ching. Right. Cha-ching. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thanks for buying my drugs, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what did I get? I got two? You got, um, you got one of the misting sprays, which has um, ten uses, roughly. Okay. Um, and then you also got, uh, what, two pre-rolls. Okay. Of the uh, the finest halo weed. Can't wait, Tita. I cannot stress enough. Do not ask for any more money until we get more money. <clears throat> so make make these last. Got it. All right. I'm already lighting one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Both of the pre rolls are already lit. Got it. <laughs> Zaxa, what are you? Doing? You're sitting in this uh, hard stone bench, kind of looking uh, down at a sitting there, arena. holding the still full whiskey mug, <laughs> being disgusted at the barbaric display Goings in front on. of me, um, and waiting to take any of the whiskey uh, until everyone's drank theirs, and I know what it's going to do to me. Because I don't, I highly doubt he's had any alcohol before, mm, even if we've had it. He, he, in the dark, yeah. Yeah. 
Zach, so, so you're going to drink studious. that? What? Yes, like, yes, you, of you course. If you don't want it, like, I'll take it. I, I, I will drink it. Right. It's, uh, it's an insult if you let me buy you a drink and you don't drink it. So... He says Probably that, and then I what? just start, like, sipping mine. <laughs> I haven't really had any, so I'm like... He's going to very cautiously try and pour it. Oh. <laughs> make a slide of the inside. <laughs> He's like, that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's an 11 minus 1. Uh, Cooper is like, um, excuse me. I didn't pay good credits for you to just be dumping out the whiskey. Oh, oh, I was trying to like play it off. I was like, oh, oh my, my coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you going to drink it or not? Because if no, just give it to Minerva. Well, I, I, I don't want to insult you, Kubrick. It's not I'm an just... insult as long as somebody drinks it. It'd be worse if you didn't and Fair. it went undrunk. Fair, true statement right there. He'll just, like, look at it, and he'll take a small sip. Wait, Actually wait. take a sip. It ta- it, it's, I know you're well-versed in whiskeys. Uh, it tastes like a, a pretty decent quality whiskey. Huh, all right. And, and when I say you're well-versed, I mean Mike, not Sox. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> Sox is well-versed just, in whiskeys? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> takes a D4 of damage. Feel it, uh, feel it burning up in there? <laughs> This disgusting liquid. Yeah, you've... see, this is why I didn't think he, Plonk would Kubrick's like it. just gonna grab it from the top of the mug and just like, <laughs> and hand it to him. And Wait, I sneak over to Plonk and like sure? let her try mine? Okay. Plonk, are you sure? Yeah, are you I wanna sure? try it. Everybody else had it. <laughs> Please don't, don't, don't spill it. Don't drop the cup right and just give it back to me if you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, Paul, do, do you, you like, like it? it? <laughs> so, you know how, like, everything else that I tried, I just spit out? <laughs> yeah. So I take a sip, and I remember that she said not to spill it or anything. So I take a sip. Oh, God, please don't let me spit it back in the cup. <laughs> I oh, said don't sip. drop the cup. I, I said don't... don't spill the cup. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm not spilling anything. All right. I go to take a sip. It touches my tongue, and I just spit it back into the cup. <laughs> and I go, no, I don't like it. <laughs> Didn't think you would. <laughs> Better not waste that perfectly good whiskey. I'm, I'm not wasting it. You know. Figured as much. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and while you're having this conversation, the amber kind of elbows you. She's like, about to start. And you see uh, one of the two swordsmen being dragged off the field after having his throat slit. Um, well, the other one is like, Aah! in the center of, of the ring. He's got to get and pushed off to the side. Um, and this well-dressed uh, ASMR comes into focus. Jet black hair um, and dark, dark eyes. Uh, wearing a bright red robe with like yellow filigree around. Um, and he stands there, he takes out his wand, kind of like in Harry Potter, holds it up to his throat, uh, and begins to speak to you all. It is finally Zomdenag and the Night <laughs> of Parties! And he like raises up his fist uh, with the other hand, and you hear the entire crowd cheer and clapping. And it, tonight is the night you have been waiting for. The battle between Kirgoth, Heaven's Gate, versus Vishwas, the Incapacitator. And you see this uh, ASMR real big, built like a tank, come <laughs> stepping that, out. Are we like Vishwas? No, no, this is, um, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Kirgoth. Okay. Yep, the other guy. The okay. Heaven's Gate. Uh, he comes stepping out and just Kierkegaard. in Kierkegaard. over one shoulder you see this Kierkegaard. massive double bladed axe. Korgoth. <laughs> From the other side, you see this a medium humanoid, kind of lanky, um, and it's blue scaly skin with those large ear-like fins on the sides and beady black eyes. You see him kind of stepping out with a net in one hand and a trident in the other. 
Um, and the two of them begin to head to the center and just kind of circle around, staring at each other as they go. His name is now Fishy Swaz. <laughs> Fishy Swaz. <laughs> and you hear this announcer, <laughs> And let the games begin! And he kind of pulls the wand away and just kind of levitates up it to get a really good above view so he can continue to announce. And the battle begins. Bonk, I'm gonna... Bonk is actually very interesting. <laughs> mm, it's, it, it, yeah. yeah. So you see these two, and, and the big axe guy is kind of just circling, keeping his eyes directly on uh, Vishwas. Um, and Vishwas <laughs> is kind of standing there. Every once in a while, he'll kind of lunge forward and take like a stab with the trident. And then if, if the axe swings, he could tries to wrap it with the, the net. And the two guys kind of circle each other. Um, but as they circle, um, you see Kirgoth. He cut as the as Vishwas goes to stab in. He kind of brings the axe down over it, and then elbows Vishwas in the head. And he kind of oh, stumbles back and almost loses his grip on the uh, the trident, but kind of catches himself and begins to dart around. And as this larger being starts to to close the distance. He begins to kind of bounce back and forth to try to avoid the swings of the axe. This time, the axe comes in and almost just right down the center, he's able to push back just enough. To, as, as the axe comes down, he's leaning a bit forward. Uh, this is Kirga. Uh, Vishwas is able to get a good stab right into the, sh- uh, the, uh, the pectoral area. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> yeah, you hear the crowd scream out at least half of it. <clears throat> Others are like, oh, boo, like whatever's going on in, in, the, in the center of the battle. This goes back and forth a bit. I'm going to like elbow Diambra. Mm-hmm. So who do you think has this? Well, you know, I've, I've seen both of them fighting before. Um, definitely different styles, but I think if Vishwas can stay on his toes, he might have this one. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Take his head off! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the two of you, how do you take this this barbaric um. display? Plonk's <laughs> well, like so excited all of a sudden. Like, I, I don't know. Be like this. I don't know. How like drunk am I? Because I feel like regular Tita, he's not really about the violence. But like, well, I've been, I wouldn't say I've been you're too drunk. Just yeah, you really only had like one drink. Okay, so um, then it, it's fairly potent, but at the same time, it's one drink. So it's also a. A mug. A of mug. A large yeah. mug. Have you finished it, or are you? I mean, I'm at least halfway done. All right. All right. So you're you getting maybe some tips. Like I, I picture on. like a, so, a like a pint glass. Yeah. yeah. Like essentially, it's filled with whiskey. Like a, almost like a growler. I'm just, <laughs> just, like a growly, a growler filled. Exactly with whiskey. like yes, a growler. Yeah. Exactly that. Um, right. I'm kind of not as interested in the fight. I'm sitting there looking at my like drug purchase because I really want some but she told me I can't really ask for more so I like I'm just kind of like sad because I want it but I don't want it right now because I don't want to use it so I'm just gonna like I guess look at people around and just keep sipping and whatever because not as um Zaxa how about you how are you feeling about this Zaxa is trying to make the best of this disgusting situation (laughs) And study fighting styles. Oh, okay. So you're taking notes and whatnot. Taking notes on these two. Uh, the big axe is too heavy and hefty. The other guy is is fast and, and can move. And he thinks uh, fishy swaz definitely has this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm like jumping around and like like yeah go and everything and like I think at some point like Minerva like picks you up and like puts you on her shoulders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you're having these discussions and excitingly watching and whatnot, uh, you see Vishiswas. Um, <laughs> yeah, you see you see Vishwas. He kind of takes a couple steps back, and you see him kind of calculating. And as um, Kirgoff begins to charge in, he kind of takes another step back and then just kicks up off the ground, flipping over uh, Kirgoff. And using his net to kind of wrap Kirgoff's head and pulling him down to the ground onto his back. That was a natural 20. <laughs> um, so Kirgoff is just like rolling around to the ground. His axe is off to the side now. Oh. 
Uh, I keep wanting to say Vichy Swaz now. Uh, <laughs> What's his name yes. now? <laughs> Vishwas goes to stab down with the trident, but as he does, um, Kirgov grabs it. It's kind of just holding it at bay. <gasps> And you see, you see <laughs> Vishwas now putting his second hand onto it, essentially dropping the neck to try to push down. Let's do a strength check between the two of their athletics. The plug's checks. basically falling off of Minerva's no, shoulder. Yeah, Minerva's yeah. just like, she's like holding onto plugs. You can see the, the center spike of the trident beginning to slowly enter the chest Ooh. of, um, of Kirgoth, but then Kirgoth uses only one hand to continue holding that and reaches up and grabs uh, Vishwas by the shoulder and then just pulls him down to the ground with him and throws the trident off to the side. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Ooh, all right. Uh, Vishwas, the, uh, so nimbly, leaps up from the ground, looks around, sees his net on one side and his trident on the other, and one massive Kirgoff standing right in between. <sighs> he takes one breath. And begins to charge. I feel like I'm watching a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kirgoff goes to grab uh, Vishwas as he's uh, running ahead, and then he ducks down and slides right underneath the legs of Kirgoff, rolling to his trident and flipping it up. And as Kirgoff whips around, Vishwas stabs up into his chest, and Kirgoff is like, Argh! Pulls it out, he's like, <sighs> just falls backwards to the ground. <laughs> and like jumping with Plonk. <laughs> yeah, the, the crowd, some some people are jump up and cheering and standing while others are like, oh, reach out, whatever, and then throwing things around. But yeah, it's it's such it's a, a great spectacle. Except for Zaxa, everyone is super yeah. excited. And I'm just running. <laughs> well, I'm kind of yeah. I'm whatever. Just running I'm down. Just probably like, finishing. Yeah. I mean, everyone's whatever. cheering, so um, yeah. <laughs> My little hands are like. <laughs> <laughs> but this yeah, this event uh, it took about it was probably about over a half hour um, with you getting there and and people filing in and the couple battles in the beginning and then yeah. this the this massive battle. But yeah. It was it was fairly epic. The more cool. the more I drink, I'm like, yeah, that's right, you piece of dread. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna like look up at Plonk and be like, you glad you came now? And <laughs> Diamber's like, she'll fit right in. Yeah, no, I, I'm certain of it. Um, yeah, so uh, Diamber's like, well, um, should we head to the club? I don't see why not. Very good. Before we go, uh, I'm gonna grab everyone another drink. On me well, and she goes over me. and if if none of you want it say so now i'm gonna guzzle the rest of whatever i have <laughs> okay. mine and like make sure i'm like oh yeah i'm gonna get room for another one <laughs> i'll pass can i get you something a little more childish maybe a juice <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> very funny i'm all set thank you very well cooper's like you know i'll take one and she looks. A new. juice. <laughs> uh, I noticed that you did not like the whiskey or the wine. Uh, I'll take another wine. Do you want an ale, perhaps? We'll just mix it all together. It works wonders in the morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me nauseous. <laughs> right now. Real life fun fact. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just take another wine. Sure. And she heads off to go grab some more drinks for everyone. Um, in the meantime, you, there's plenty of people kind of pushing by to to uh, head back out to the other festivities that are going on um, this evening. She comes back, hands everyone their respective mugs. She hands you the goblet, and and hands Oxa a Capri Sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, they're not a sponsor yet. So. <laughs> A pouch of juice. <laughs> a juice pouch. Yeah. A juice no, pouch. Non-brand juice pouch. <laughs> wink, wink. So, so <laughs> as you all have your drinks, and you can carry these throughout the streets. There, no one cares. Yeah. You could be, you could be smoking, doing drugs, whatever you want in the streets, as long as you're not injuring anyone. Cool. Uh, you're, you're pretty much good. So, so, did you want to stop by the room to? 
Put your pickaxe back there before we go to the club. Uh, yeah. Alright. I can keep my pack, right? As long as there's no weapons in it. Right, like the bag's in, right? Shouldn't like, be a problem, yeah. 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 Also, if we're heading back to the hotel, we should probably freshen up and, and maybe change our outfits. Um, a lot of you are have ripped, torn, and very dirty clothes. I mean, well, adventuring, right? Well, yes, of course. It's uh, a lab coat, it's what it's for. It's a, <laughs> there are a couple shops along the way if we want to get some uh, more exciting clothing. And about the money part of that. Buys a shirt that says, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be too expensive. But I highly doubt you'll be allowed in the club wearing things like that or that. And she points to your, your like, harem pants. And then I look down at my pants like, what's her problem? <laughs> like, <laughs> They're all, like, dirty. There's patches and, like... <laughs> So, so many burns everywhere. Yeah, just fire. A bunch of burns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's go shopping. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, and she'll take you to a few different clothing shops. Uh, you can get really whatever you are looking to. Uh, you know, make yourselves beautify yourselves in whichever way you would like. Oh, I want to buy a vest. Oh. All right. <laughs> Going through easily, you can find a vest, no problem. She's like, I'll, I'll let you get your vest. <laughs> I'll let, I'll allow it. I know, right? I said vest, but I was like, here's the money bill. Zach <laughs> <laughs> uh, says, anything in particular you'd like to wear? Um, exactly what he's wearing, except I'm going to cast Prestidigitation and clean myself up. <laughs> so, you're not wearing that, are you? There! Now I'll be wearing it! That's a neat little trick. Ooh. How about you, young one? Hmm. I want, like, a, um... Like a one-piece thing. You're getting a romper? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Alright, we got a romper, we just got a cleaned outfit. Yeah. We got a, a vest. Do I need to get new pants? Because my pants are... Pretty gross. Well, you just, we all just said they had, like, burn holes in them. Yeah. So, <laughs> I want a romper, but I want it to be, like, like, cute and, like... <laughs> what romper isn't cute, first of well, all? No, I'm well, I want it to be, like, clubby. I know. I want it to be, it's like... all of them. Like, club-like. Okay. So, like, like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know. <laughs> like, cutouts... <laughs> oh, yeah, we get the pockets that stick out from underneath, like, four yes. inches... Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I guess I'll get new pants if, if I can get new pants. The new pants if I can yeah. only get one, I'm getting the vest. So I'm just going to throw that out there. So we got a vest and some new pants. We got a romper, uh, club style. Uh, Minerva, anything for you? So Minerva I do like a spin and I'm like... Is... <laughs> She's going to get uh like a like a suit. Um it's it's all black, but like the coat of it is kind of just like this like lacy pattern. Oh yeah. And she's going to um just like have her hair like in one like big like poofy braid. Okay. Very nice. Very yeah, I'm gonna nice. let my hair down. Deambra, my yeah. Deambra takes all her armor and everything off mm -hmm. and she gets like this um not like a sundress, but kind of like that club style dress. Mm -hmm. um, and Cooper's like, well, I'm wearing this. Yeah, you're fine. I'm wearing this. So. You and, and at this point, uh, anyone who is passive insight, is, pretty much everyone except Plonk, picks up on the fact that uh, Cooper is starting to get a little sloshed at this point. Like, he's only had a couple drinks, but it's been a while for him, and he's, yeah. he's having a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's getting a little drunk. But you all grab your respective outfits. It comes to about seven credits. If you'd like to mark that off. Yep. Just keep going. Uh. And I'm gonna like I'm gonna say to everyone, listen, do not mess these up. We're gonna return them tomorrow. Okay? <laughs> okay. Of course you are. I'm immediately going to spill my drink. Yeah, so I was just about to say yeah, I immediately okay. spill my red wine okay. onto this onto this white outfit. <laughs> The only oh no! no. <laughs> so, 
Chita, you go into one of the, the dressing rooms mm. to kind of change up, but they're not specific cubicles. It's just kind of a room off to the okay. side. Um, so as you're kind of changing out, uh, probably Plonk is going in there to also go into a romper. As you turn the corner, you see Tita pants off. <laughs> Now, the way Tita looks normally, very, like, flowy pants, Linux's legs look quite large, but with his pants off, they're just, like, these tiny, skinny, little, like, bug-like legs that look so like, weird. Like, so weird. So, like, are they staring at me? Or, uh, like, plonk is well, I moment. walked in and I was like, <laughs> it's all right. And then I'm, like, putting my pants <laughs> Are you, are you done? Yeah. It looks like the pants are still on. It's like, <laughs> so everyone gets into their respective clothes. You head back to your hotel room, drop off anything that you need to drop off. Um, is anyone taking weapons with them to the club? Well, they said we couldn't do well, that. Well, they will be confiscated at the door, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, oh, oh. Um, do they check the barracks? Are you asking? <laughs> Tita's got a big bag. No! And it's like hanging. Yeah! <laughs> hey, yeah, I, was, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't mean about the axe, I meant about my throwing stars. Um, who, yeah, is what's, is she in the room with us? The Or what do we do? We're going back to the room to like drop the stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just dropping all your stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah, so I'm just gonna ask, like, uh, so are they gonna check the bags too? Mm, most most likely, I, I, I would assume. I was yeah. gonna say you've been in this club more than I have. Essentially, they're just trying to make it so that it's safe for everyone involved. Fine. I'm just gonna reluctantly take my like strap of throwing stars off and like hang it up at the big bags, <laughs> and then I'm gonna pat it a little bit because I love it so much. <laughs> uh, Zoxy, you don't carry weapons besides your darts. Are you taking those with you, or are you? I'll take one, but like just throw it up. <laughs> Throw it up where? I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> say I'll cut out a slot in one of my books, but I'll think, no, no. That'd be a terrible ruining oh, book. Oh, yeah, great. Oh, Bring books terrible. to the club. That'll be, that'll do well for you. Uh, all three of my books are coming with me. Of course. Also, he doesn't know what a club is, so we're gonna get there and he's probably not going in. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, are you, you're taking your daggers or are you leaving them in the room? No, I'll leave them. Okay. Are you taking your pack with all the other stuff? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, never, I mean, obviously, I never go anywhere drops. without it. <laughs> right. The fully armed double sword and crossbow young lady over yeah. here. What are you doing? I'm just going to leave them. Leave it all behind. Yeah. yeah. Do you have Great, a... so we're going to the club and we're going to die. Because none of us got any weapons. Uh, yeah, right. I have a dart. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I'm just going to do the same. She takes everything off. Kubrick, um, he takes his little uh, rapier belt thing off, throws it on the bed, and he's like, I don't think I'm going to be needing that one tonight. I've never seen you use that. Uh, well, I. I'm not that great. It's, you know, more defensive. Just mm. kind of scare them off. They're like, ah, I have a weapon, you know? All right, I guess. <laughs> great. All right, are ready? I, I understand, Cooper. <laughs> rolling my eyes you again. Know, before <laughs> any kind of, you know, drain goes down, so. Yeah. All right, well. Let's go. I'm, yeah, let's let's do this. And uh, Diambra and Cooper at this point are leading you. To halos and horns. Uh, you get there, and there is um, a tall, probably eight foot tall, um, white winged being, humanoid being. There, uh, they have like this deep bluish teal colored skin, bald on top. It's difficult to tell gender um, for whatever this this uh, being is. But they're just standing there with a large sword outside the door, and you can hear inside. <laughs> uh, and you can see the lights are just flashing neon colors all over the place. Uh, yeah, he's just standing there, and he kind of like looks you over. Any weapons? I'm gonna like flip my vest out because I'm so pumped about the vest. Be like, no. <laughs> Zax is just gonna start backing up from the <laughs> noise and lights and just be like, I. So he kind of uh, looks you all up and down. Is everyone saying no? Saying no. no. Yeah. Okay, because you all have nothing. So he kind of just, uh, he, he kind of looks each one of you like he's looking at your soul. Kind of nods. 
nods. You're backing up still? Yeah. Do you wish to gain entry? I don't think so. Come on, Green. That yeah, is, come on! That is not... Yeah, guys, we're not gonna pressure Zoxa to come in. <laughs> to frill or not in <laughs> We are gonna pressure him! No. Yeah, come on! No, I think, we are not. I feel like it'd be more the lights than the, the sound. The, just flashing like this. It's just like, that doesn't look like the right thing to do. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he looks at you for a moment, takes a peek at Kubrick, and then at Diambra, and he's like, Any of you who wish to enter may enter. Zoxy, so we can meet you back at back. the hotel if you want. I believe that would be best. Alright. Take care. <laughs> Still staring inside. <laughs> How and, are there people and here? As, as the rest of your party is entering... Um, there, you can see, with the doors open, you can see that there is, a like a dim reddish light kind of giving the ambiance glow, and then there's all kinds of other lights that are just flashing and whatnot. Um, as the rest of you enter, you can see that the majority of the, the party goers and the dancers that are there are wearing some sort of fake devil-like tail, as well as devil horns, and everyone is just partying like crazy. <laughs> Everyone has drinks in their hands. The the above everyone's heads is just big clouds of smoke from all the drugs that I'm are being taken. I'm definitely whipping out my spray and doing my first <laughs> use of the spray. Yes, <laughs> please do. All right, so oh, no. and the Constitution saving oh, throw. No. <clears throat> Sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. <clears throat> so. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. You have different, different settings of, of... Different settings, yeah. essentially. <clears throat> so you, 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 you take the spray. You don't really even know how to use it. You just kind of spray like, yourself oh in the God. face. You're like... <laughs> kind of breathe it in. Um, and at, at the moment, it doesn't seem to be taking any effect. But, was, but well, hold on now. We will see no, I, that was him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not immediate. Okay. Um, no, actually, he probably wouldn't be mad because he would probably know that like it takes a minute. So. Yeah, yeah. Be patient. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's there's these uh, cocktail waiters and waitresses coming around. They've got trays, a slew of different drinks. The drinks are not just like the plain amber colored whiskey that you had before, but there are Ooh, drinks of bright drinks. blues and greens. There's a few yeah. red ones, purple, just what? all different colored drinks. Are they smoking? Is it like the sugar factory? Uh, <laughs> the, the red one is smoking. Okay. Um, and the, the blue one has all kinds of like fruit and, you know, like umbrellas and, Ooh, and little I sword things. I <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, uh, you, uh, the, there's like this, um, this, ASMR gentleman uh, that comes up. He's wearing the horns and the tail. He's like, uh, can I interest you in some drinks? I see you were kind of staring. <laughs> Minerva is so the hard The look can I interest you in drink? No, I'm fine, thanks. And then I'm gonna like walk, like uh, out of the corner of my eye, like look at Minerva and like Take a step away. <laughs> so now that you're in this club, there is a bar that you can get drinks at. Just like any club that you would go to uh, around here, you can get drinks. Like I said, there are vendors walking around selling all the different drug options. Uh, the prices for the drugs are a little more expensive in here than they were out in the streets or at the, the stadium. Um, but it is just a very jovial atmosphere. Everyone is having a good time except Zoxa who's not there. Uh, I'm having a good time because I'm not there. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Can I try to um, take a drink off of a tray as I like walk by? Right? Absolutely. Make a sleight of hand check. Perfect. <laughs> oh, we're about to get kicked out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eleven. Uh, you just, as they're walking by, you just... And they continue to move, and they don't notice. Oh, perfect! I grabbed a blue one. Okay, so yeah, you've got. It has um, <laughs> different types take... of fruit. There's some pineapple. There's a, like a, a a small bit of like a, a the fruit part of a coconut oh, yeah, yeah. as well, kind of skewered through. 
Um, and yeah, it's like a, a Caribbean fruity style drink. There's tons of umbrellas and oh, whatever, all kinds of stuff in there. I, do I notice that she did that? Um, you can make a, a perception check against her sleight of hand, yeah. Well, you've been, you've been can... keeping an eye on her pretty closely as it is, so. We can see that she's drinking it and we well, can yeah. buy it, so. <laughs> Alright, so with disadvantage, that is a 19. 19. You absolutely see uh, Plonk swipe one off the tray. You do notice that the cocktail waiter does not notice, um, and then she just, so I just wanna, starts like, sipping. Look at Plonk, and I'm gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna like take my drink and like raise my eyebrows and then like, continue talking. Continue on. So now in this club. It was club, kind of like a. Like, I, I bumped into them and, like, and like grabbed it and was like, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then, like, walk away. Absolutely. So now that you are all out and about, let's jump to Zaxa. Zaxa, what are you doing? Crowds and crowds of people all around you. You're in a strange land you've never been in before, and your entire party has left you to go dancing in the club. In this club. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to do? I do recall that there are uh, men walking around with spears that look like the type that aren't the partiers, mm -hmm. you know, the guards. Mm -hmm. uh, they could probably direct me in a way that I would like to go, mm -hmm. which is not to the clubs, and instead to, I am not going to be able to pronounce it, uh, Muselheim? Oh, yes. Um... Yep, Muspelheim, Muspelheim is the um, the oceanary uh, domain of the where all the Triton are. Yep. Uh, so you you go to the, a couple of these guards. You see a couple <laughs> guards. You see them standing there, just kind of like elbowing, snickering to each other. They kind of point out a couple of the crazy people and they <laughs> laugh together. And then they see you approaching. And they kind of, for a second, they kind of look you up and down. Like this isn't something that they normally see, obviously. Uh, and one goes as you approach. Can help you. Ah, uh, yes, you might. I am looking for a way to Muselheim? Muselheim, yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple elevators that go all the way to the ground level of the mountain. Uh, there are docks down there as well. You probably want to charter some type of ship. Can you breathe underwater? For a bit. All right, well, yeah. You, Head down there, and uh, if you just dive right off the docks, <laughs> the water's fairly clear. I'm sure you'll be able to see uh, what your destination. Good. Thank you. Of course. As you start to turn, he's like, uh, are you not uh, enjoying the festivities this evening? Oh, I, I, I am, of course, but uh, my business is not yet complete. Business is complete at 8 p.m. There's always more work to be done. So you're one of those, I see. Very yes. well, be on your way. Walk away, just don't. <laughs> uh, Scribbling uh, angrily in your notebook. Yeah. As you kind of look Please back at that anger, you see one of them just with like a little flask, kind of sit and <laughs> put it back down. Um, of course. But yeah, so you, if you'd like, you can attempt to head down to Muspelheim. Yeah, that'll be great for... Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, we'll take musical line for $500. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great for an hour. For an hour? Yes, mm. it should be good, yeah. So you can, yeah, head down that way. Um, the rest of you in the club, uh, what are you doing? So there's the bar, there's the dance floor, um, there's a bunch of, like, VIP couch areas that you could sit down and have some drinks at. And again, like I said, there are the uh, alcohol and drug um, uh, servers moving around as well. I feel like Minerva kind of just like, like near where the dance floor is, like she kind of is just like, like, you know, she sticks to the wall and she's kind of like leans against it, like with her arms crossed, and she's just like. And you can you can kind of see Diambra and <clears throat> Kubrick. They're out on the dance floor, dancing with each other, dancing with other people, getting others to join their little dance group and whatnot. They're, they they form a circle with their shoes in the center and they start dancing that way. Oh uh, <laughs> it's like a wedding from the nineties. <laughs> um, Plunk, what about you? You uh, snag that drink. Yeah, I, it's already gone. Yep. 
Good. Good. It's already gone. Um, and I'm I'm like I'm dancing, and then I I want to try to get another one. Okay. So those of you who've had two drinks at this point or more, I'd like Constitution checks. Everyone immediately Wait. reaches for dice. Saves or checks? Checks. Did you say con? Con check, yep. Fifteen? Okay. Do I have disadvantage on this? Uh, it is a check, so yeah. Alright, cool. That's a, uh, that's seven. Seven? Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool. You are feeling pretty tipsy at this point. Um, you can still control your actions, uh, but at the same time you're also exhausted. So you're kind of just like, <laughs> all around. Uh, Plunk, how are you looking long. at the moment? Um, this background music. Uh, ten. Ten. All right. Uh, you didn't. Ha- well, you actually had a couple wines as well. Yeah. So, for your tiny stature, uh, you're you're definitely feeling tipsy for sure. You got that kind of like that joyous like hey kind of feel the vibe going on. Um, and what did you say you had, Tisa? Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, the alcohol doesn't seem to be affecting you too much. Um, however, the drugs do. Cool. <laughs> Anyone who's near Tita or sees Tita throughout this, you can see that his eyes have now gotten, you know, they're wide open and the pupils have just dilated <coughs> significantly. Oh, I'm dilated for first. This has, this spray Oh my god, can I similar... see the sword right in there? We're like... <laughs> <laughs> No, you, you're welcoming welcoming all these lights. Like it's this is. You know, I'm putting the goggles on yeah. for the full experience. <laughs> oh yes. Um, and but you, the the similar feeling. I, I I don't think you as a person have ever taken ecstasy, but nope. that is a that is the type of effect that you begin okay. to get. You're like happy go lucky. Everything is just bright and exciting all around okay. you. Okay. Well, since I'm super quick, can I just be like dancing around like a bunch of groups and kind of? Oh, like... absolutely. <laughs> Okay. You got your 50 feet, and you just disengage, disengage, check out all the different groups. <laughs> disengage. <laughs> Plonk, you said you wanted to try to steal another drink? Yeah. Go for it. Slide a hand. Come on. Nine. All right, so you go this time. You do this. Uh, you, it worked last time, so you do the same thing. You kind of bump into them. You're like, oh, so sorry. You try to like hold their tray up and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but as you try to take the glass off this time, uh, you, you feel a hand kind of just slowly go around your wrist. He's like, uh, that'll be a credit. 50, please. Oh, sorry. I thought it was going to fall, so I was holding it. <laughs> Make a deception check. Eight. All right. Well, I'm keeping my eye on you. you just kind of. I doesn't... yeah, and I just kind of dance away. <laughs> all right, all right. He puts the drink back up, continues to move. Zoxa, so you make your way down. You find the elevators. It's free to take, and you head all the way down to the base of the mountain, where the waves are lapping across the uh, the the base. Um, like I said, there are a few docks. These are not made of the same silvery metallic metal with the the crystal within. These are just very basic wooden docks like you would find pretty much anywhere in our world. Um, You make your way there. At this point, it is dark out, um, so it is difficult to see into the depths of the water, even though it is so clear. So you are kind of staying there. I feel like you, you can make a perception check with disadvantage. I will do that. Or is perception? Oh, well, wow. it's not a minus. The disadvantage. Ha ha! 16 plus 1 is 17. Ooh, all right. The other one was a 17. Oh, excuse me. Do you have the light cantrip? Oh, ahem. Uh, yeah? Oh, this is God. Can you please roll again? <laughs> <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> oh! Uh, Good job, Caleb. Well played. Well played, God. That is a nat one. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> <Did> it again! <laughs> Alright, so, you stare down into this dark abyss. You can't even see a foot down into this water. It's completely pitch black. 
Cool. <laughs> cool. What would you cool. like to do? Uh. <laughs> well played. You look around, there's no one around whatsoever. Everyone's probably up partying or under the waves at this time. I need answers. I dive in. <laughs> you dive into the dark depths. And we'll come back to you in a little bit. Uh, or we won't, because you'll be dead. Or we won't. <laughs> we won't. Uh, now at the club, you're all. Uh, Diambra comes up to you eventually and is like, what are you doing with your back against the wall? Come on, Just girl! And she grabs your wrist I, and tries to I, pull I, you. I don't... Dancing is not really my thing. It is tonight! No, and I just kind of like to listen to... Cooper you. comes oh, over, yeah. grabs your other arm, and they yeah. both start to pull you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah! Like, arms. <laughs> all right, you're, all right. you're watching Tita dance, and all of a sudden he's behind you like, yeah. come on! <laughs> <laughs> to the center of the dance floor with Diambra and Plonk and Kubrick and you all begin to dance. You, you can still see Tita bouncing from group to group. Uh, Tita, you are feeling fantastic. Everyone here is your friend. Right on, right on. Yeah. I'm, I'm dapping up Eventually the vest comes arms. off. And you... Oh, I hope I don't lose it. Oh, I'm like whipping it. And yeah, it. yeah. I want to um, go up to like, if people like put drinks down on a table. I want to, like, try to take drinks. <laughs> there's some oh half-finished half yeah. drinks and, yeah. you know, whatever else. Yeah, you can go pill for those and begin to yeah. start sipping on them. I, like, I pour all of them into, like, one cup. <laughs> 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 it doesn't bother me because I can't really taste it anymore. Well, not so. at this point. Oh, man. So you're all having a good time partying, dancing, and that's when the lights and the sound goes out completely. In the entire building. All you can hear is people, they just stop and they start whispering to one another. You hear. Ting, 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 ting. Wait, can I see anything? Because I have like dark vision. Is it light? I also have dark vision. vision. If you have dark vision, you can see all of the people that have just kind of stopped dancing. But you can see everyone kind of looking around. But at the moment, you don't see anything else. You just hear it. I drop my drink. As you're, <laughs> can I be bought back to the group? Like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, as, as the you're you're trying to intently look around. I would like uh, the few all three of you can make perception checks. Um, if you don't have dark vision, it's disadvantage, and if you're Minerva, it's disadvantage. <laughs> Thanks. Ooh, okay, that's not bad. Sixteen. Sixteen. What what is it again? Perception. Right. Well, I mean, you are super drunk, so it would be um, one not natural. Okay. Uh, so you're trying to look around. You're short as it is. Everyone is is kind of in your way. You can't see anything, but you can now that obviously Minerva and and Tita, you can hear this sound after a little ding ding. And you can both see in the darkness, the room is beginning to fill with some type of gas or smoke. Tita's actually going to put his goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> I need for everyone to make a constitution saving throw. Is Plonk next to me? Uh, you said you bopped over to yeah. the so yeah. So can I, I want to put my little hand on her. What am I doing? Oh, Con saving throw. Oh, crap. Oh, my gosh. You see Diambra collapse to the ground. Kubrick does not, but he <laughs> kneels down next to her and begins to, like, kind of check her vitals. 19. 19? 16. 16? 11. You're not there. Make sure I got my DC correct. Okay. Too bad I'm not there. It's my best save. <laughs> Kubrick and Plonk remain standing while everyone else seizes and falls to the ground. You are incapacitated. You can still see what's going on around you, but you cannot move, you cannot speak, you cannot do anything. And that is where we are going to end for the evening. Dun dun dun! <laughs> Great. Thank Did Plonk fall down though? Because I was holding her, so. No. Oh yeah. Great. Yeah, you collapsed to the ground, Plonk kind of fell on top. Again? Of <laughs> <laughs> like that other time. Great. Yeah. But that is where we will end for next time. 
everyone, all of our viewers, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe on YouTube and also follow us on Twitch. See you next week.